Mr. Chairman, sir. An opening remark presented by the chairman of Okanafun Economic Development Committee, Elder Dr. Idongesi Demas Udom, during the first Okanafun Economic Development Summit, holding at Okanafun Local Government Council Hall, Ikorok Bangkok, on Tuesday, 1st June 2021. The Honorable Member representing Okanafun in the Kwaibom State House of Assembly, Dr. Mrs. Charity Ido and spouse, our host, the Executive Chairman of Okanafun Local Government Area, Honorable Godwin Inyeng, Barisa Anyekan Ukpana, Chairman, Swami Planning and Execution Committee, the guest speakers here present, distinguished awardees, all participants, our able rapporteurs, specially invited guests, gentlemen of the press, Ladies and gentlemen, grace and peace to all participants at this first Okanafun Economic Development Summit, holding this year at the Local Government Council Hall, Ikorok Pankuk. I give God all the glory for his love, peace, protection, mercy, healing, an abundant grace to all of us from year 2017 to the end of May 2021 and for the joy of gathering as a people of this great local government area and as friends of Okanafun, business partners and investors for this epoch-making event. I rise on behalf of Okanafun Economic Development Committee to welcome all of you to this Economic Development Summit, the first of its kind in 45 years since after the creation of Okanafun LGA in 1976. Okanafun Economic Development Committee is a pan Okanafun committee of eminent citizens established by the Local Government Council as a development think tank to partner the Council's administration in forming a new template for generating stroke sustaining development and business investments in the short, medium and long term. The committee was inaugurated on February 4th, 2021 by the Executive Chairman of Okanafun Local Government Council, Honorable Pastor Godwin Inyeng. Our vision is to have a thriving local government area to all. Our mission, UKADC, as the voice of business, is to design, advance, and advise the local governments on opportunities and solutions for a thriving local government economy that is inclusive and competitive. Okanafun Local Government Council handed over to us six mandates, which includes the planning, execution, and organization of an economic development summit. We have decided to commence our visible assignment with the Economic Development Summit 
in commemoration of Kanafun at 45, coming up today, Tuesday, 1st June 2021. The theme of this year's summit is repositioning Okanafun for sustainable development. And for today, our focus in presentations will only concentrate in one, education and capacity development for Okanafun's sustainable development. Two, entrepreneurship as the catalyst for Okanafun's sustainable development. Three, security and enabler for investment and sustainable development. UK EDC has brought highly respected and experienced professionals as resource persons to do presentations and discussions on all the topics above. Why we thank the Executive Chairman of Ukanafun Local Government Council, Honorable Pastor Godwin Inyeng, and all of you for giving us this wonderful opportunity to contribute our quota for the development of our fatherland and thank all the resource persons for their acceptance to come and support us. Permit me on behalf of UK EDC to assure you that we are committed to serve you sacrificially with all our strength and might and resources without fail. UK EDC is now set to kickstart numerous programs which will contribute to the social economic development of Ukanafun local government area. You can visit our website on www.ukedc.com. We are prepared to partner with the Kwaibum state government, federal government, our sons and daughters in Nigeria and in diaspora, business partners, investors, and multilateral and donor agencies to ensure that Okanafun LGA is developed better than most local government establishments in the country, provided that you, in return, will give us the following. Number one, peace. Number two, security. Number three, protection of our assets, such as electrical installation equipment, boreholes and pumps. Four, an enabling environment to do business. My prayer is that you, you all will effectively participate in this great occasion and benefit from our presentations and discussions. Thanks very much for honoring our invitation. Elder Dr. Idongasi Demasudom, Chairman of UK EDC. Thank you. We'd like to thank you again, Elda Idongas Dudum, Chairman, UKEDC. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to bring up one of the most inspirational figures in Nigerian journalism. He is a son of Okanafun, uh, and for the past 73 years or thereabouts, he has been around across the globe grooming other people from other places. Today, he has come home to begin to contribute more to the grooming of his own people. He is the moderator of this summit, Mr. Ray Ekbu. He will make a presentation at this time. Sir. Ladies and gentlemen, since we have been appropriately, our presence has been appropriately acknowledged by the um, last speaker, who is the chairman of UKDC, I don't think I need to go through all of the protocol, except that I recognize everybody uh, who is here as a very distinguished uh, person. 
I am very happy with what I've seen here. This hall looks very beautiful. And I've said to some people, if Ukanafon looks like this hall, we all would be happy. And uh, I, I think that is part of why we are here, to see if we can make Ukanafon look like this hall. But it's people who made it look like this. So Ukanafon people must be able to make their lives look like this hall. There is something that the celebrated uh, novelist Chief uh, Chinua Achebe called the spirit of Ubuntu. This is how he explained it. A man who calls his kinsmen to a feast does not do so to save them from starving. They all have food in their homes. When we gather together in the moonlit village ground, it is not because of the moon. Every man can see it in his own compound. We come together because it is good for kinsmen to do so. End of quote. That is the spirit of Ubuntu. Let that also be the spirit of Ukanafun. I wish that would be the spirit of Ukanafun. Ukanafun is 45 years old this week. It doesn't look it if you want to assess it in development terms. Its growth is stunted. It wears a frown on its face. It walks like a cripple. If you compare Okanafun to a temple, it will not be hard for you to conclude that this is a desecrated temple. There is the famous saying in Nigeria that those who will have a right to eat from the temple. I agree entirely with that, provided those who walk in the temple do not eat up the temple as well. We are not here to find faults. We are here to find solutions. That is why we gave birth to the Ukanafun Economic Development Committee, which is the midwife of this summit. The mission of the UKEDC is to join hands with like-minded persons to put a block here, a block there, so that the Ukanafun architecture can rise to lintel and roofing levels. If you believe that Ukanafun deserves more development than it has got so far, then we are on the same page. If you believe that the elites of Ukanafun can do more individually and collectively for Ukanafun, than they have done so far, then it means we are preaching to the converted. In the animal kingdom, there are two classes of animals. The ones that have horns and the animals that are hornless. God, in his infinite wisdom, wanted the animals with horns to use their horns and pave the path for the animals that have no horns. Those of us with the benefit of good education, experience, and exposure must use these assets, these horns, our horns, to help the helpless among us. That is the mission of UKEDC. Ladies and gentlemen, our people had been tormented and killed in the days past by cultists and other assortment of criminals in Okanafun. Some of our people had to flee from home and become helpless and hapless refugees in other people's homes. Some slept in bushes like animals to escape the wrath of the hoodlums. For us to make progress, we must emphasize 
that there is a nexus, a connecting rod, and an umbilical cord between peace, security, education, and development. Peace is a precursor to development. Without peace, there can be no development because you cannot put something on nothing. Education is a capitalist. Educa education is a catalyst. Education is a game changer. Education is a transformational agent. And no society, repeat, no society can make phenomenal progress without the gift of education. That is why we have assembled this eminent team of professionals to educate us on what we must do to change the status quo and get to Canafon on the highway to sustainable development. Thank you very much for listening. Mr. Ray will look soft. Mr. Ray will speak soft. But that is where it stops. Inside that soft mien resides a very fiery spirit. And it manifests itself when it holds a pain. And it's one of the most cherished pain holders anywhere on the face of the globe. And he is a son of a Kanafu. Thank you very much, sir and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we will go straight into our presentations. For the course of this summit, the official recognition will be ladies and gentlemen. We all know your hierarchical placings, and we would not in any way attenuate your standards or disparage your positions. But for the purpose of this summit, we would please ask that you are safe to be addressed as ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we will go on to the first paper. And before I bring on the presenter of the first paper, I would like to introduce those who will be discussing these papers. And I'm going to invite them first to step onto the podium and take a seat. And uh, after they are seated, I will now invite our lead presenter to step forward to the lectern and do his presentation, after which he will sit with the discussions and, of course, a discussion will follow. And that is where our repertoires will be battle ready to save from the wealth of knowledge and information being brought to Kanafun today and keep in such a way that we will use it to the betterment of our younger generations. May I, at this point, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, invite, first of all, the licensee of the newest approved universities in Nigeria, Dr. E.T. Abraham. Dr. Abraham, please, you will step forward. Please, sir, onto the podium and take a seat. Go ahead, sir. Risen voice. You who we'll give uh, the doctor a very brief orientation on putting his mic up and off. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to invite the next discussant. He is uh, actually British, but his address is global. He is the owner and uh, group managing director of Iratus Group. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Barry Marshall. Marshall, yes. If you can help me encourage Mr. Marshall as he goes up. Thank you very much. Barry Marshall, uh, global citizen, all the way from everywhere else to Kanafun. The last of the discussants is uh, someone steeped in the legal pro, uh, profession. And among the many things he is, is also the Executive Council of uh, Ex Ex ExxonMobil. May I invite him, Dr. George Ackman, 
So please step forward. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set for our first paper as uh, Dr. George Akban takes his seat. Dr. George, Mr. Barry Marshall, and Dr. E.T. Abraham. May I at this point invite our lead presenter who happens to be a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Personnel and Development. Ladies and gentlemen, in the program in your hands, we have painstakingly written in-depth biographies of our presenters. So instead of overly introducing them, in the course of this lecture, you look at the name, look at the pages, and get to know more about who is coming up. They are very erudite and uh, versatile scholars in their fields, and uh, it is a huge privilege to have them here in Okanafun for this purpose. May I invite our lead presenter, Ido Denyen Isaac. Please put your hands together for him as he steps over to the podium now to make his presentation. Isaac will be speaking on education and capacity for Okanafun, Okanafun sustainable development. Thank you very much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the summit is off the ground. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to be in Ukanafon this morning. I've seen the beautiful local government, the good roads that are laid here, and I've met some very beautiful people this morning. So thanks for having me. I think I'll start by thanking the organizers of the summit for giving me the opportunity to speak on this topic, education and capacity development or capacity building for sustainable development. Considering the state of our nation today and the velocity of change around the globe, I think um, there's no better time than now to discuss or address the issue of capacity building because it's very critical to our su success. Like Dr. Ray Ku said, it's the catalyst for development. I think before we start, let's um, take a look at what capacity development is or capacity building, whichever one we choose to call it. Capacity building is about providing individuals with the right skills, the right knowledge to enhance their value, to enrich their worth, to enable and empower their minds and their brains to make them better and more productive individuals. That way, they are capable of creating value, they are capable of creating wealth, and they are capable of taking advantage of opportunities, both in the current and emerging circumstances, to improve their lives, to uplift others, and to improve the environment, ultimately making our society a better place. You know, according to Connelly Ewango, he said capacity building when you engage in it and in building the younger generation, it's going to make a better place and a better generation. So definitely I salute the organizers of this summit for embarking on this journey and for setting out to build a better generation for Kanafon and a better future. I think I'll um, pause at this point to recognize and commend one of our Kwaibom's son, 
who demonstrated exemplary capacity in the field of engineering. And recently he was awarded with a fellowship award by the Nigerian Institute of Engineers. The youngest ever Nigerian to attain that feat in the field of engineering in Nigeria. So I think he's worth commending. I know he's not here with us, but just to underscore the importance of capacity development and building, that's why I've brought that up. So I think we can just give him a round of applause in absentia. <laughs> to give context to our discussion today, I think I would um, like to share some experiences I had recently with two individuals. Some months ago, a young man reached out to me via LinkedIn asking for help to enable him to get a job. According to him, his current job as an administrative assistant in a secondary school, a private secondary school, was not paying enough to enable him to meet up with his responsibilities as the breadwinner of the family. I engaged him further, but I tried to educate him that to the best of my knowledge, in my over 20 years of experience, no employer helps any employee, particularly when it comes to employment. I have not seen any serious employer who is out to do business for profit, who provides help to employees for the purpose, just for employment. But what employers do, they pay for service that is delivered, they pay for talent, they pay in exchange for skills. That is what they do. After educating him, I went further to ask him what he could do outside of his current administrative responsibilities to enhance his earnings since that was his primary concern. When we engaged further, he told me he was good with social media. We all carry our smartphones today. We chat, we do social media. So he said he was very good with social media. And in addition, he was very good with PowerPoint design. And I was like, wow, that's a good one. You've got some marketable skills there that are in high demand. PowerPoint presentation capability is a marketable skill. Social media capability is a marketable skill. Once you are able to commercialize them. So I said I'll work with him to help commercialize those skills of ease. And if he's steadfast and focused, he would earn more money from those compared to what he currently, uh, currently earns as an administrative assistant. Fortunately, at that time, I had a presentation I was working on for a company. So I committed to being his first client, since he said he was very good. I asked him to go ahead and design a template for me of just 10 slides. I would prepare my content, give it to him to populate. And he should give me his bill, I'll pay. I asked if he could do it, he said yes. And he promised to deliver the day after. By the day after, I didn't hear from him, so I reached out to him to check on progress. He still said he would get back to me. Um, fast forward, this is about three months after that discussion. He's not gotten back to me. And I have long completed that, pro that project and I've moved on. That was, the, that was a missed opportunity for that individual. The second instance was a lady who visited me. She's an accountant and works an accountant in an NGO. She enjoys her job according to her, but the only challenge was that the earnings was not sufficient for her to meet her needs. We got talking and I think the first thing I tried to find out from her, if she had any conflict of interest restrictions that could prevent her from engaging in any other commercial activities. And she said no, provided she wasn't carrying out the same type of business as her current employer. 
At that point, I was, wow. Then let's explore further. What can you do? What can you engage your, your mind? What can you engage your brain? What can you engage your hands in? And she said she was a very good writer. That she writes for her church. She edits the articles for her church and the newsletters as well. And that, in fact, she writes for her pastor. In my opinion, again, that was a skill in high demand that I know and highly marketable. Why do I know this? I write. I write articles. So I know the pains I go through. At times, you could have the ideas. I know a lot of executives, they write, they have the ideas, they put them down, but at times they need people to help them put that idea in a readable and appealing format. So I know writing is a marketable skill in high demand. So I committed to work with the lady again to commercialize that skill of hers. She asked how she could start, and I said, simple. Today we have LinkedIn. Do you have a profile? She said she does, but it's not active. And I asked her to go activate her LinkedIn profile, and that is going to be the starting point. And she should try to showcase her skill and capability in writing by publishing stories, very short stories, either on a daily or weekly basis. The idea wasn't to demonstrate any form of subject matter expertise. The idea was simply to showcase to her target audience that she could write and, as such, sign off and provide her contact details should they need any form of um, professional writing help. She said she would do it, and she was actually very, very excited. Two weeks later, I called to find out progress. She said she's been busy and not been able to set up her LinkedIn profile. Again, it's about two, three months since we had that discussion. Nothing has happened. Again, another missed opportunity by that individual. For these two individuals that I've just shared in my experience, I think what they failed to realize is the imagined nature of work and opportunities. When you recognize the nature of work, the emerging trend and the opportunities, you'll be able to recognize the capabilities that are required to execute those work. And you can effectively take advantage of those opportunities at any point in time. They fail to realize that they could translate their skills to services to earn a living, and that they have what it takes for lifelong employability by doing what they liked and what they enjoy doing rather than remain focused on our traditional mindset of today, which is lifelong employment. The era of lifelong employment is fast fading. So any capacity building initiative today should be focused on producing individuals who will, be, who will have that capability to have lifelong employability. And this is what these individuals had, but they never knew. I think the assumption was that when they reach out to me, I'll go through the traditional route of saying, bring me your CV, I'm going to submit it to a company, or I'll give it to a friend who will help facilitate your gaining employment. But they didn't realize that the, the times are changing. So they were supposed to focus on the new trends because the concept of work is fast changing. The skills required to do work is also fast changing. While their thinking may not be totally wrong, as, is, as it is the case with so many people right now, I think for any meaningful capacity building to take place, either by individuals, by the corporation, or by the community as we are doing today, we must recognize that the dynamics in the world of work is changing. We must recognize that the 21st century economy is different from that of the 20th century. We must recognize that those changes have come to stay in the world of work. And as such, that would help us to stay targeted and focused on building the right capacity. If we don't do that, we are going to expend a lot of energy, expend a lot of resources to build outdated capacities that will not match with the current 
and emerging trends. And with that, I doubt if Okanafon would get to that destination that they seek to reach at the end of the day. In the words of Malcolm X, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it. So once again, I commend the organizers of this summit because I believe that that journey to prepare for that tomorrow, that great tomorrow for Okanafon, is what they have started today. After laying that brief foundation, I think my mission today is quite simple. I'm going to take us through very practical steps of building blocks on building capacity. I'll try to answer the what, which I think I've answered, basically to enrich individuals with the right skills and knowledge and education to enable them to take advantage of opportunities to better themselves uplift others, improve the environment, you know, and build a better society. We will answer the why in the course of this presentation and also answer the how, which I think is the critical part. How do we go from here as a local government, as a people, and as a state? That said, we'll be looking at education and capacity in the context of knowledge, skills, and emotional intelligence. When you are building capacities today, when you are developing individuals, gone are the days where you say, I want to focus on developing an individual who can only work in the plantation or in the factory in his or her village. The world has become global. So in developing people today, you focus on building a global talent who is capable of taking advantage of opportunities both in his or her environment and in the global space. That's the way the world is going. Because if you don't do that, people who are outside would come into your environment and take advantage of those opportunities. You are looking to build individuals who are rounded in every aspect by equipping them with the required knowledge, skills, and emotional intelligence required to enable their success, required to enable their development and advancement, and required to enable their prosperity, and ultimately leading to that sustainable development that we desire as a people, that we desire as a local government, and that we desire as a nation and as a state. I think Dr. Ray could try to illustrate on why education is very critical, so I'll spend very little time on this slide. But I think the key thing we need to note is that education is that bedrock that guarantees prosperity of a society. It is that bedrock or that thing that provides the foundation for durable success in any society. It is crucial for social, human, and economic development. It guarantees peace. It improves peaceful coexistence. We know the situation in our country today. With education, a lot of the issues we have today can be sustained. So we cannot but focus on building capacities of our people. Just to further buttress that, you have a table here. It may not be too clear to people at the back, but let me just go through what is there. Right here, you have countries that are rated as the top 10 in education in the world. Now, it may not be in any particular order, depending on what report you are looking at, but they are ranked top 10 in the world. Here you have the per capita GDP for these countries. They are also ranked amongst the best. Here you have the Human Development Index for these countries, ranked among the best. And here you have life expectancy for these countries, ranked amongst the best. These countries, United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Germany, France, Australia, Switzerland, Sweden, Japan, and Netherlands. These indices you see here, they reflect the extent and the level of prosperity 
of those nations. So basically, that shows you a direct correlation between education and the prosperity of nations and the prosperity of a people. So if we must attain the level of prosperity we intend to attain as a local government, if we must attain the level of prosperity we intend to attain as individuals, we cannot help but focus on education and capacity building. We're all very familiar with the COVID-19 pandemic. This is um, June 1, 2021. I'm sure by June 1, 2020, we wouldn't have been seated in this hall this way because everybody was in one lockdown or the other. In today's world, it will be incomplete to discuss capacity building without recognizing the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic inspired change and disruption has brought upon the world. If we do that, it will be incomplete because we are going to be missing out on a lot of very vital aspects. The COVID-19 pandemic, I, I call it the accelerator and the disruptor. On one hand, it accelerated so many things. Things happened at a very fast pace on one hand. On the other hand, it disrupted so many things. Almost every area of human activity was disrupted. Name it, economic activities were disrupted. Social activities were disrupted. Even in our state and around the country, religious activities were disrupted. Everybody was locked in. It was disruption characterized by volatility, disruption characterized by ambiguity, disruption characterized by uncertainty. In the midst of that for a lot of companies, remote work became the order of the day. We had corporations who ran effectively, stayed productive for the whole of the time with employees working remotely across several locations. Automation across industries became prevalent due to the pandemic. The rates of production and delivery of certain goods and services was highly accelerated. And as we know, I think maybe some of us or most, you know, I would say some of us here would have taken the COVID vaccine. For the first time in human history, vaccine was developed, manufactured, distributed, and administered within a record time of about one year. Prior to that, prior to now, we would all say that was impossible. But it happened. That shows you the extent to which the human capacity can go if well developed and harnessed. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the disruption, we had companies that folded up on one hand. We had companies that thrived and flourished on the other hand. We had, comp we had individuals who lost money. We had also had individuals who made a lot of money. We had individuals who lost their jobs. We also had some who gained new employment. We had people who for the entire 12 months, they wallowed in a state of complaint. On the other hand, you had people who took advantage of the opportunities and they learned new skills and adapted to new opportunities. That was the pandemic inspired situation for us. It was a mixed bag, I would say. On one hand, it delivered or dealt dark clouds on several aspects of human endeavor. On the other hand, it opened up new realms of opportunities. It opened up new realms of possibilities. And that is why we cannot ignore the 
the impact and those effects as we discuss capacity building in today's world. We are now in a world of continuous disruption. And that disruption has more or less come to stay. So while COVID-19 may have accelerated a lot of these trends, they have become a new reality that we must live with, take advantage of the opportunities it presents, and make progress in our lives as individuals and as a community. You know, I'll share uh, again another personal experience I had with two individuals here in Akwaibom. During the pandemic, one of them, his business suffered significant decline in terms of patronage, but that did not deter him. What did he do? He was able to explore and open up alternative markets. And right from Uyo, he was now providing online training to individuals outside of the states and outside of the country. Another individual, a lady here in Uyo, she's into catering service. During the pandemic as well, the consumption dropped, patronage dropped in our local environment. But that did not deter her. She went ahead to explore alternative logistic sources and means where she was able to leverage to export her cooked food to other states. So while she was here in Uyo, she was exporting food to Port Harcourt and to Lagos. She opened up new markets for herself. And that did not just prevent her business from going down like others who were in the same space. But she improved her earnings and she has grown her market. Why have I given this illustration? It's simple. Those two individuals were able to do one thing. One, they had the capacity to be able to read the situation learn, adapted, and they took advantage of it. So in the words of Charles Darwin, it's not the strongest, neither the most intelligent of species that survive, but those that are able to adapt. So for these reasons, we cannot ignore this impact inspired by the COVID pandemic, the changes in the world of work, the changes in the way that opportunities present themselves, and even the changes in the skill sets required to operate in today's world. We cannot ignore them when discussing capacity building. We've talked about the what's, now we'll look at the why. Why do we build capacity? For me, I think it's simple. You're just trying to match skill or individuals to job or opportunities. You have the individuals, you have the people, you have the jobs, you have the opportunities. How do you match them? Build the capacity of the individuals to that point where they fit into available opportunities, to that point where they fit into available jobs, either in the present or imagine circumstances. There are two very critical elements here which we are going to explore. The worker, which is the individual, and the opportunities or work that are available. Because if you don't know what you are developing people for, you may just develop them for anything, which may mean nothing at the end of the day. So you need to know that, yes, I'm trying to focus on building people to take advantage of work and opportunities. Then you now focus on building the individuals. But where you have opportunities, where you have jobs, and you don't have people with the right capacity to take on those opportunities, what happens? The opportunities Either of two things happen in our global world today. The opportunities remain untapped, or people from other climes, because it's a global world, come in and take, over, take on those opportunities. That's a simple thing. So why people in your environment and in your climate are complaining? There is no job. There are no opportunities. People from other climes are coming in and taking on those opportunities. It's either of those two things that happen. And I think we currently see something similar in our Nigeria situation today. For those of you who follow data and statistics, uh, I think as of today, the unemployment rate in Nigeria stands at about, I think, 33.3% for the country. 
Then the South-South is leading the pack when you put it in terms of region with 35%. That's huge, a very high unemployment rate. I know we have employers in the house. We have entrepreneurs in the house. In my experience, up until recent, I'll tell you, one major challenge that employers face, one major challenge that entrepreneurs face is staffing, filling vacancies. I'm aware of job openings that have been open for past six months, one year, that are yet to be filled. Did people apply for those jobs? Yes. Were people interviewed? Yes. Did they find the right fit? No. So it is such a paradox that in a country where you have a very high rate of unemployment on one hand, huh? on the other hand, one major challenge that companies and entrepreneurs face is staffing, getting the right people to fill in those vacancies. And that is why capacity building is very critical. You must bridge that gap. You must provide people with the right skills, the right knowledge, the right attitude to be able to take on jobs, take on opportunities as they arise. And we are now in an evolving world. Things change every day at a very fast and unpredictable rate. So we should build individuals who are able to adapt to those changes on the fly and take advantage of those opportunities. We've tried to address the why. Before we move on to explore the how, which I think is the critical part of this, we will focus a bit on these two critical elements. The worker, which is the individual, then the work and the opportunities. Stand, like I said earlier, if you understand the opportunities, opportunities that are available. If you have a good understanding of work and the emerging trends, it will help you in designing your program and help you know the right skills you need to build individuals for. Growing up as a child, uh, I think um, my dad was a civil servant. So every morning, my mom also worked. So every morning, they woke up, hit their cars, and they went to work. And they used to carry me along because they dropped me off on their way to work. They dropped me off at school, me and my siblings, and they had to, headed to work. They did that for about 35 years before they retired. So the only concepts I understood about work then was that work was a place we go to. Because I grew up knowing my dad the whole time as somebody who was going to work. My elder brother also finished school and started going to work. So I knew work as a place we all go to. That is a dying concept. It is a dying concept. Work is not where we go to. Work is what we do. Work is the service you provide. Work is the problem you solve, the solution you give to people. That is work. And these three elements will continue to shape the face of work. So in building capacity, we must take cognizance of them, and stay abreast. So that way we understand the dynamics which will help us to train and develop people. One is the disruptors and the enablers. Those disruptors are technology, globalization, shifting cultural and social dynamics. There are not things any of us here has control over. So they will come to play, and they will consistently disrupt the world of work. They will continuously shape the way work is done, and it will alter the location or place which work is done. We saw that during the pandemic, and it has come to stay. Work will increasingly become distributed, it will become fragmented, and it will become specialized. Again, why so? We saw that during the pandemic, where people could work from anywhere. Granted, some companies will still continue to provide offices or continue to provide hubs where people are assembled to do work. But the reality and the emerging trend is that work will become distributed so you can do work from anywhere. You can be right here in Ukanafun working for a company anywhere in the world. You can be right here in Ukanafun providing services to individuals, organizations anywhere in the world. 
work will become fragmented increasingly. And we have seen that in several spaces. You know, I take um, the example of the um, PowerPoint slide presentation I talked about earlier. Content development on its own is now a standalone work. The design of the templates could now be a standalone work. And the person who takes that product to market, either through social media or other marketing platforms, is a standalone work. So the entire chain is becoming fragmented. You look at the field of logistics. I remember when I joined Mobile some years back, about more than 10 years ago, the company had the logistics department. And in that department, uh, presenter, please, uh, may I crave your indulgence to ask that you pause for a minute so we can receive His Excellency the Deputy Governor. Thank you very much. You may please sit if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for that break in the lecture. We want to observe some protocol and receive His Excellency the Deputy Governor, after which our very distinguished lead uh, lecturer will continue. May we please rise, ladies and gentlemen, for His Excellency the Deputy Governor of Aquaibum State. We are happy to have His Excellency the Deputy Governor here with us. May we please keep standing as we take the National Anthem and the State Anthem. Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, we are delighted to have you in Okanafun today uh, as we celebrate 45 years of the birth of this local government and commemorating as the final activities in the anniversary with an economic summit. Your Excellency, before you arrived, we were slapped in the middle of our lead lecture. And uh, in the course of this lecture, the gentleman told us his story of how he needed someone else's service and the man said he would get back to him. A week after, he didn't get back. Two weeks after, it was still the same story, I will get back to you. Up till today, more than six months after, he's still yet to get back 
to our lead speaker. Uh, lead speaker, I want to assure you that this time around, someone will get back to you. <laughs> we had to receive His Excellency. Excellency, the title of his lecture is Education and Capacity for Kanafun Sustainable Development. He took us through the works, the enablers, the trouble spots, and uh, got on to the whys and the hows. We actually were on how when you arrived. So, Your Excellency, I'd like to crave your indulgence to return to the lead speaker. He was almost rounding up, but he, we will allow him to do a little recap, and then we will run from that point. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, Miebo, Deputy Governor, you're welcome. So I'll continue from where I stopped. So we had looked at the disruptive, the disruptors. We looked at the emerging nature of work. I mean, work today, so long as the work tool and the work product are portable, it can be done anywhere, not in necessarily any particular location. We need to take cognizance of that. Fragmentation, I've talked about that. Specialized, work is becoming increasingly specialized. I talked about logistics. I was trying to use that as an example so we understand the extent of fragmentation that work is going through and will continue to go through. In the course of my work with several companies, I've worked with companies including my last employer, which was ExxonMobil, where they had logistics department. And in that department, you, they owned vehicles, they owned drivers, they owned maintenance personnel, they owned a maintenance department. That was logistics. Today, that is no longer the case. Before I left, and in most companies I know today, logistics department probably may just comprise of a coordinator. You have someone else owning the vehicle somewhere. You have someone else owning the driver or being the driver somewhere. You have someone else maintaining the vehicle somewhere. Fragmented. And on the other hand, opportunities. They are now global and local. You can, geographical barriers have been completely eliminated because of globalization. So you can be in Ukanafon and be doing work for anybody, anywhere. While you can access your local opportunities, you can also access the global one. What does this portend? Two things in my opinion. On one hand, significant opportunities. Because you can access opportunities anywhere in the world from, the, from your bedroom. So now you have access to more opportunities. On the other hand, it also poses a challenge, which is stiffer competition. Because almost everybody, everywhere in the world, has access to those opportunities, and they can aspire for them. So while you have the benefit on one hand, because opportunities have been enhanced, you also have the challenge on the other hand, which has to do with stiff competition. And the single currency that will be an edge or a competitive advantage for anybody is your capability, your capacity to unlock those opportunities. Because if you don't, even if they are right in your doorstep, someone else from another client will take advantage of them. And that's why we cannot help but continue to embark on capacity building, which is what the summit is all about. Now we look at the 21st century worker. Now that we understand work, the trend, we are now looking at the individual, that fit individual who can take on those opportunities. According to studies, what characterizes a 21st century worker would be control, autonomy, flexibility, mobility, which has to do with both location and employer independent workers. We have a lot of nomadic workers today, but that is not the focus for today. Our focus is to explore the skills that is required by the 21st century worker or individual to unlock opportunities in the 21st century economy, as that would help us as we embark on our capacity building initiative. I have tried to categorize them in two buckets broadly. One is what I call the industry specific skills and knowledge. The other is what I call the work and industry neutral skills. For the industry specific skills, for example, you can take, if Ukanafon can decide, we want to become uh, the next silico the Silicon Valley of Aquaibom or the Silicon Valley of Nigeria. 
you take that industry, IT, and you explore the opportunities in that industry. You map them out. You look at the knowledge required to take advantage of those opportunities. You look at the skills required to un unlock those opportunities. So with that, you come up with what I call your matrix. Opportunities, knowledge, and, and skills requirement matrix. That helps you in designing your program and taking people through your development pipeline. You could do that either as a community or you make the, the information available to individuals who can take advantage of them. That way, when you design that matrix, what it helps you to do, it helps you to identify the various skills in a particular industry, and you can now build people in each of the areas. You can target both the immediate, medium, and future ones, and that helps your development program. You can do same across industries. You look at the aviation industry, the oil and gas, agriculture, manufacturing, maritime, we have the boom of the coconut fact, let me start preparing myself. Identify individuals and take them through that development. To make life easy for you and for others, it's necessary. If you don't do that, it's going to be very difficult to operate in a 20th century environment or economy. Okay. Okay, I think I'll move straight to the how and I'll run through it very fast because of time. Um, for that, it's simple, I would say. The key thing to do, how do you build capacity? I would recommend for this committee, the organizers of this event, set up a committee. Let them take responsibility for driving that initiative. Identify the opportunities that are available, the key industries, the opportunities, the skills required. Do your skills gap, skills gap assessment, and then draw up a program which you would implement to help you get to your desired destination. I've talked about this already. These are tip, basically the key, the key steps that you need to take to build capacity. But most importantly, I'll, I'll highlight two things. You need to be clear on what your goals are from day one. When you develop your goals, publicize them. What that does, it helps you with accountability. You can see that our goal is to develop 10 professionals for the maritime industry, for the agri industry in the next 10 years. The choice is yours, but publicize it. That way it puts pressure on you and creates accountability. And have a clear tracking system where you can track and monitor progress. If not, if you don't monitor, measure, you won't be able to manage. And at the end of the day, it will just be summit, summit, and summit without achieving our desired objective. Okay, let me point out that capacity building, you know, it will not happen by chance. We can't wish it into existence. It's something that we have to be very intentional about because it requires time, effort, and resources. So if you are not deliberate about it, either as an individual or as a community, you will not get there. So at this point, I would um, indicate, you know, by association, and from Mukanafun. And um, Ikoro Kusong precisely. That's my village. So when the organizers of this, of this summit, should they set up that committee to drive this initiative? When the committee gets to the program design and implementation phase, as a way of giving back as my own contribution, I'll be available if required to provide help and support pro bono right. to drive that initiative. And in addition, I'll be available to also provide help and support in the areas of coaching, mentoring, and career counseling for indigents pro bono as my own way of giving back to my local government. So on the final note, when individuals have the right capacity, when they have the right skills, they have what it takes to adapt. They have what it takes to learn. They have what it takes to grow. They have what it takes to take advantage of opportunities, both locally and globally, both in the present and imagine. And they make themselves better people. They help others. They enrich their community. And they make our society 
a better place. And as Peter Drucker said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I believe that collectively today, we have commenced that journey to create that desired future for Okanafon and for our dear state Akwaibo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ndodeng. You may please be seated. Uh, what will happen now is that uh, we may have to steal into the discussion time to be able to save time for the rest of the papers. That doesn't mean we won't discuss this paper. And for you, Mr. Ndorenyen, I still want to assure you we'll get back to you with the wonderful ideas and the promises you've made. Uh, you have clearly exemplified what our work will be now. Set up committees and create the initiatives that will lead to execution. We have heard. And our rapporteurs are very much on cue. They have their paper in advance. So whichever one you didn't read, they had read. And now that you've given us a cue, they should be able to articulate your viewpoints, which they already have, to be able to pass on to our committee. And then we would, of course, move on to execution. But then we have this gentleman here who would articulate that path to result orientation. And um, if I may begin from my right, uh, I know two minutes is not such an exciting time to talk about all you know about creating initiatives and executing educational master plans. But give us a little insight into what next we could do after we've listened to the lead speaker. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm told I need to sit down. But why I decided to stand up is because of my height. <laughs> so if, if you would tolerate my height, noble cause for the educational advancement prerequisites for Kanafon if he has to make progress. He has given us his personal experiences and interactions. I like to key in with his recommendation that Kanafon needs to set up a think tank chart a cause, undergo what we may want to call a SWOT analysis. Look at your strengths, look at the current weaknesses, look at the opportunities he has identified, and look at the threats that could threaten those opportunities. I think that think tank will do that work justifiably. In that process, Okanafo will need to create a niche. His paper, to my mind, has addressed what I used to call the cash gap. Cash. K-A-S-H. Knowledge, attitude, skill, and habit. A lot of us in this country have this challenge. And our educational system seems to lack the capacity to build cash in people. You find young Okanafon guys who sneak to Port Harcourt. Abuja, Lagos, with no skill, with no proper attitude, what they will return with will not be what we like. So Kanafu should begin to focus on these young people, begin to train them and empower them with skills, attitude. So the think tank will have to focus on this very critically. And I think the presentation has identified that. When you talk of education and proper education, it has to be so emphasized. In his introduction, he referred to the youngest fellow in engineering in this country. And I want to say, sir, and without mincing words, that young man had proper education. He was educated in his secondary school days in Top Fed International Secondary School, Pata. He didn't mention the name, but I'm aware that's Dr. Wiz Omenang. It was one of my first children that got a PhD in engineering in Bad University in Faraway, UK. Good background, good education builds good capacity. So whatever Okanafun is doing, that should be a focus. He has made a wonderful suggestion. A lot of things are happening all over the world 
and in Nigeria in an bomb. I want to advocate that that think tank should think of putting together even a fund for proper scholarship in such a way that you would intentionally say year one 2022 Okana phone will as a community as a progressive local government sponsor 10 good people to build capacity in the medical sector in the engineering sector in accounting in education and like you said we must identify the needs maritime industry is coming engineering issues are coming automobile industry is coming where is Okana phone where are you? You cannot sit sitting down and wishing, ladies and gentlemen, makes no man great. The Lord God gives fishes, but you must dig the bed. So can I phone, having come this far and having been so sensitized by the lead presenter, please dig the bed. It has to be intentional. I like to simply re-emphasize the issue of vocational training. Development of skills, because if you are not so empowered, then obviously it cannot be so done. I've talked about using his initiatives. The think tank should undertake a sort analysis of a kind of food, as far as education is concerned. There will be no nothing against inventing a vocational center for kind of food and training youths. And let me, ladies and gentlemen. Like he has said, good education is necessary. And by the singular grace of God, when you want to do the training, we have the educational institutions by God's grace that will supplement and support Okanafun in human capital development. You must train people that will be able to learn, he has emphasized that, on learn the old ways and relearn the new ways, giving the globalization imperatives. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to personally appreciate the paper and recommend that those few issues I have decided to share and confirm and accept should be part of the program of the think tank. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I thank you very much, Dr. Abraham. I don't know what they hate, but I hate something like you can take a cow to a river, but you can't force it to drink. I heard something about the level of your attitude determines your altitude. It goes back to having capacity and not being able to utilize it. He is from Ikorokusum. Ikorokusum is 12 minutes from here. Masha, let me give you a background about Ikorokusum and Okanafun. Um, Craven Cottage, that's in the borough of Fulham. And um, Stamford Bridge, Chelsea. That's about 20, 20, 12 minutes between Craven Cottage and Stamford Bridge. Same distance between the Corpus, where he comes from, and our village. So then, how do you inspire an Okanafun child to get the right attitude to want to go to where he has gone? And coming from the background that you have, tell us something we don't know, Masha. How do we get the right attitude to get capacity to work for us? I mean, firstly, uh, I would like to um, say um, a very special thank you for having me here, inviting me here to your first summit. And equally to your excellency, to the chairman, uh, and equally to the, um, the lead speaker in terms of the presentation. I think it was a very rounded and a very informative presentation, so thank you very much. Coming from outside um, of Nigeria, but it's, it's prudent to um, make known that I've been in and out of Nigeria for the last 18 years uh, on many occasions. And my very first occasion into the country was actually as a technician uh, working in an offshore asset because essentially I'm very heavily involved in the oil and gas and the petrochemical and various industries of the, you know, the sectors that I represent. But one thing that I've looked at um, in all the times that I've come into Nigeria is the development uh, of the personnel. Now, some of you may have seen from my profile, I represent an organization 
which is very impartial. It's a non-for-profit organization. But touching on some of the points from the, the lead speaker is it does provide uh, a certification, a skill set. And we spoke also about globalization and taking technicians, not just locally, but allowing them to go beyond the borders of Nigeria. And I think it's vitally important. But let me also share with you, there is 17 members within Nigeria of this association, of which there's only seven training members. Seven training members. And we're talking, and it's been echoed in this presentation, about the development and the skills and the enhancement of skills. Where my focus is, is that not just the primary skill, but ultimately the secondary skill. So this association that I represent in my capacity is into But throughout the summit, I've asked myself, this is the first summit, and I've asked many others prior to coming here, has there been many more? I think there's a great attendance. There's lots of experience. There's entrepreneurs here. There's people in business. There's people who can create opportunity. And I think this would be good, not just here in the state, but the whole of Nigeria. So on that address and on that closure, I'd again like to thank you for this opportunity for being here. I'm privileged and honored. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mashallah. I, I think personally, you've hit the nail on the head. It still goes back to what you said at the midpoint of your presentation. Massive potentials versus the big gap. So how do we fill the gap? How do we utilize the massive potentials? Uh, could it be policy? Could it be anything legal? Uh, I would like to come to you, uh, doctor. What has policy got to do with the creation of a big gap vis-a-vis -vis the utilization of vast potentials? Or has policy got nothing to do with it? So what are the trappings that could deter or encourage a young person to maximize the opportunities open to him? Strive to be like his elder brother, Ndurengi. Try to see how to fill the gap. Try to make what we are doing here count by ensuring that tomorrow he takes an action that will be proactive and useful to him. Where do we start, doctor? Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank my good friend, Idote and Isaac, for laying out what capacity development uh, is all about, uh, education and all of that. Um, I want to say that uh, myself and Ido Tenyin Isaac, we used to work with the Exxon Mobil. It was because we had the capacity, and uh, I'm happy to see um, Mr. Udominoyo here, who employed both of us in Exxon Mobil because we had the capacity to work there. Um, to address your question, I think policy is a very important element that is needed uh, for uh, capacity development to, to, to happen. It has to be a deliberate and intentional act by a government, if you are talking about government, to say, look, I want to develop capacity. I want to develop capacity of people. So these are the things that I'm putting in place to encourage capacity development. So it has to be an intentional act. Uh, even if government doesn't, um, because there are many priorities of government, even if it, they don't want to do that, they don't have the, the time to, to do that, an individual on its own, because capacity development can happen at the individual level as well. So what you have to do is, as an individual is to look out for opportunities that are available now and the opportunities that will be developed in the future and train yourself to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. There is one lady in uh, CNN, her name is Zen Asha. She was just uh, uh, um, uh, a receptionist in uh, a production company and she worked there she did not have any other skill at all apart from being a receptionist what did she do she decided on her own that she wants to be uh, a new uh, uh, i mean a, a newscaster and so she developed herself went to the library studied spoke to successful people 
and by chance she met uh, a director from CNN and uh, they had a conversation. The director told her that uh, they are hiring for a news anchor, business news anchor. Because she had prepared herself, she had studied, she had spoken to people who were successful in that area, she was able to get that job because that was her dream, to work in CNN. So government has to put in place some policies that will encourage uh, people to develop capacity. And if government uh, doesn't have the chance to do that, as an individual, you can also do that on your own. Uh, because first and foremost, opportunity is only for the prepared mind. If you don't prepare, you will not be able to take advantage of opportunity when you see one. There are many things that, happen, uh, that are happening in this state currently by the uh, current governor. The airline came. Uh, people complained that the quiet women were not being uh, 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 employed. But the, the, the point is that did they have the right skill set to be able to work in this sector? We are hearing about deep sea port that is coming. Have we prepared ourselves for the opportunities that are there? And Yekan is part of that team. Uh, have you asked him what is the skill set that will be required in this new sector that is opening up? We have to be intentional. We have to be deliberate about, about it. And of course, local government can do more. Uh, I, I align myself with the suggestion of my friend who happens to be from my village to Ikorokosum by adoption, that we need to do that <laughs> by way of uh, uh, the local government setting up a committee to study the skills that are lacking, study the opportunities, and to try to train people to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it, it's getting interesting, and I wish we had the time to go the entire distance to get to continue to brainstorm to get to where we think we should go. But then, underlying your discourse is preparation. I, I know of a young woman who approached me to see if I can help her become an A hostess on Ibom A. Uh, this is one young man who does not know that even the hostesses on Ibom A, if they for some time fail to update their training, they won't be allowed to fly. So the preparation goes to uh, what uh, Nyeka Nokbana will call habit. He tells me I'm a creature of habit. You have to become a creature of habit to be able to be focused on your preparation to be able to get capacity. Mr. Ndoreny and I think uh, they've spoken well. None of these speakers failed to refer to you, which is how it should be. Uh, I think naturally we should give you a minute, a minute or 30 seconds to see how you can do a wrap up before we could thank you and then get to the next paper. Le let me let you be, sir. Uh, wrap it up for us in 60 seconds. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you once again. Uh, I think what I would say is that um, everything has been said. The key points have been highlighted. The opportunities are bound in our states, both in the present and there are others that are emerging. The only way we can be at the forefront of taking advantage of those opportunities is by preparation. And that preparation we need to start today. If not, five, ten years from now, the bomb district port will come alive whenever it comes. The refineries will come alive. The fertilizer plant will come alive. The coconut plant will come alive and people from elsewhere, because those companies must run. When they come alive, they are not going to wait for anybody. The moment they are established, they have to start running. They won't wait for anybody. And as such, people from elsewhere who are prepared, don't forget it's now a global world. So it is not only you who is seeing the opportunity in your environment. It's not only you who has access to it. People from elsewhere will take advantage, and we will start playing catch up again, just the way we did when it came to oil and gas production and exploration. So the time to start is now. Let's all work towards supporting or contributing to that, towards that preparation to build our people towards harnessing those opportunities that are currently available and those that are emerging. Thank you. Nothing an Okanafon child will pay you 
or give to you to be able to equate the time uh, that you have given us. The best gift they say you can give anyone is the gift of your own time. And I think this has been overly displayed by you gentlemen. Flown a long way down, stayed all through, and you're still talking. And beyond the talk, you're already walking the talk. You've made yourself available to assist, to help create capaci capacity and teach our youth to grab it. We are very grateful. The Okanafun Economic Development Committee did have some mementos for you to walk away with. You have stopped us full, so we want to stop your hands full of mementos. So while we'll be there thinking about what you have told us, you'll be thinking of how you will carry them. Uh, young ladies, come up. Let's see how we are going to do this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, where is the, the chairman of our summit? Please bring our chairman of the... Yes. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman and chairman of summit, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency, we, we want to thank you for being part of this. This is how it begins. This is the revolution next time. This is how to start. This is how to begin. And you are all part of the history that will come in the days ahead. We want to thank you again, even you, for believing in Okamafun to be here. None of us thought we'd have this amazing audience and the <laughs> So please step forward to this microphone, Honorable Pastor Godwin Inyeng, to formally, at this point, uh, give a welcome address. Uh, Raphael, uh, I want to also urge you to bail me out by taking a look at some of the very distinguished persons we have in the hall. Make a list. Somewhere along the line, I will create time and call you to recognize our guests. And uh, Okanafun also has a way of recognizing some of these individuals that have come here. Uh, they have lined out some uh, awards. They have lined up some uh, commemorative moments to honor them as part of our 45th anniversary. Mr. Chairman.
His Excellency, the Governor of our very dear states, Mr. Udom Emmanuel, most ably represented on this auspicious occasion by His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Mr. Moses Ekbo, MFR. The member representing the good people of Okanafu Norovanam Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, Honorable Unime Idem, my very dear sister representing us in the Aquaibon State House of Assembly, Honorable Dr. Mrs. Charity Ido, my own boss the incoming state chairman of our great party, the People's Democratic Party, Right Honorable Elder Anir Kanakban. I've seen the former minister of the Federal Republic here, Obong if you have states, OFR, very distinguished members of the audience, our father, possibly grandfather in the profession, Mr. Reku, my vice and our spouse that are here, former chairman of councils that are here, captains of the industry. I have a very, there are very many here in this hall, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Time will fail me if I go the whole hawk of the protocol, but permit me to say that I am delighted to welcome you to this land of peace. God bless you for coming in Jesus' name. Well, I might not have much to say. The first presenter has already concluded my address. I, hope, I will only perhaps try to recover what he has said. Well, he has captured the nitty gritty of my address. But I want to say that this is a very good day and it is a new day for the people of Okanafu. It is a thing of great joy for the people and government of Okanafu to have the privilege of hosting this number of persons from all walks of life and different parts of the globe on their soil. We are particularly delighted for the presence of our dearest and most amiable governor, His Excellency Mr. Udom Emmanuel, represented here by our very dear Deputy Governor on this auspicious occasion. Your Excellency's presence on, the, on this 45th anniversary of the creation of our local government is a further testimony to the fact that Okanafun is dearest to him and occupies a good place in the scheme of his administration. It might interest your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to recall that Okanafun, formerly known as Western Anna, was created on June 1, 1976, from the old Cross River State. It was also among the 10 mainland local government areas that made up Akwa said at creation in 1987. Having itself been created from the then Abak Division, Okanafun herself has given birth to Urukanam local government area, which today forms part of the Okanafun Uruganam Federal Constituency. It is a thing of further joy and fulfillment to us that our local government is about the only one mentioned in the Bible. I mean the Bible that you and I read and use on a daily basis. This is recorded in Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 19. And I quote, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. And this is Western Anna. <laughs> and his glory from the rising of the sun. 
When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. End of quote. Perhaps it was for the reason of this scriptural provision that the Almighty rose up against the evil men who attempted to introduce militancy some few years ago into this land of peace. Thank God that our dear governor restored the peace that we are enjoying today. It is also the reason, the singular reason for that matter, that we are or we shall be on this auspicious occasion be bestowing the award of the honor of Asine Mem Ukanafun on our very dear governor, the governor of Aquaibun State, His Excellency Mr. Dom Emmanuel. Your Excellencies, we were elected into office about six months ago on a three cardinal objective of peace, education, and sustainable development. I believe that is the totality of why we are here in this summit to brainstorm and profess solutions and also chart out the course on how to get to this destination. It is therefore part of the fulfillment of those pledges that we are gathered here today, not only to acknowledge the faithfulness of God upon our lives and land, but also to demonstrate that indeed our party the People's Democratic Party is a party of performance. As a matter of fact, we are only trying to borrow a leaf, even in a very small capacity, from the governor of our state and leader of our party, Governor Udom Emmanuel. The high point of this epochal celebration will be the groundbreaking of Obon Udoi Kwenyong Unity Hall and the unveiling of the statue of one of our fathers, one of the founding fathers of Okanafu, Obong Barista Asukwa Okpana. The proposed ultra-modern council hall is just a stone throw away from this place. We shall have the opportunity of getting there in the course of this event. Named after the late state chairman of our great party, the PDP, is a 1,500 capacity auditorium with an e-library, offices, and other facilities of necessity.
Kwaibun State. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Please, can we give him another round of applause? Thank you very much, Pastor Godwin Inyeng. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ukanafun is 45 years today, uh, and this year, Kwaibum is 34, and the current administration is six. Please, don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying that Ukanafun is older than the administration. All I'm trying to say is that while we are celebrating, administration is also celebrating. So that makes the deputy governor's itinerary a little bit packed up. He won't have to stay all day. Uh, he won't be part of all the awards. He won't be part of the rest of the papers, but he'll be part of a few other things before he leaves. And these are the things he'll be involved with. He will graciously accept to sit for a few more minutes uh, while Rafael recognizes some of the persons around him. Rafael will be very uh, apt. I just want His Excellency to know that we pulled quite a crowd today and got all of them coming. So he, he, he will know. And then, uh, Your Excellency, uh, after that, we are going to, since you won't be around, we're going to do a sort of executive summary. We ask the chairman of summit to do a thematic present, a couple of minutes to give you the idea of what this is all about as you leave, sir. And then uh, after that, uh, we are going to give you the award they had kept for you. And then as you take that, we add a couple of other ones for His Excellency and the First Lady. And then uh, Uncle Ray uh, will make a vote of thanks. And then, sir, you will say those things we are all expecting to hear. And then you go and help us lay that foundation stone. And then that will be it. We'll be then happy to see you off, sir. And we'll be even happier to come back and continue. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, Rafa, take a couple of minutes and run through this. Thank you. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for the master ceremonies at this event, Mr. Anyak Panang Panang. And uh, let me um, say that um, even as uh, a good number of people have claimed to come from Mukanafun by association today, and um, so I can also afford to make such a claim that I'm also from Okanafun by association. <laughs> but this time, not Ikorok Usung, I'm from Ikorok Bangkok here, not very far away. So Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my village. And the man who just handed his microphone over to me, Mr. Nekpanang Panang, when I started coming here, told me that Okanafun is actually the um, native name for the local government, that the English name is, you can have fun. You can have fun. You can have fun. <laughs> Distinguished ladies, we are I'm privileged of the people who accepted the invitation of the Okanafun Economic Development Committee to grace this event that I think I'm not the only one who can say that we've not seen any local government area organize this before. I think this is the very first in the history of the state organized by a local government area. And the people of this local government area should be very proud not just of the summit, but also of the outcome of this summit, which is actually primed to make Okanafun rise and meet its potential and raise people that improve their capacity so that we can keep on having a safer and a better space for us to live. I stand here to introduce all of the very important persons that have come to grace this event. And I'll start by introducing His Excellency the Governor of Akwaibom State, represented on this occasion by the Deputy Governor for Kwaibom State. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Moses FR. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. In case you are not aware, there are 31 local government areas in Kwaibom, and the Deputy Governor is here in Kanafun. I think you can give a better round of applause. Please put your hands together for him. Let me acknowledge present to your applause, the son of this soil, the member of the House of Representatives, Deputy Chairman of the House of Reps Committee on Communication, a member representing Kanafuna Rogonam Federal Constituency, Honorable Unyeme Idem. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. 
Thank you very much. The a member of the Kwaibom State House of Assembly speaking for the good people of Okanafun State Constituency. One of the very males in the entire legislature in this country, Dr. Charity. Thank you very, very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, most of the people in this state and beyond were first captivated by the theme song which has been playing on several radio stations over the past few weeks. And then a lot of people were wondering what do the people of Okanafun want to do in the area, especially those in the private sector who have come together under the auspices of the Okanafun Economic Development Committee to drive this event to attempt to collaborate with the government at the local government level to improve the fortunes of the people of Okanafun in particular and by extension the people of Akwaibom State in general. I want to believe that it is something that other people may want to emulate, knowing very well that there are a good number of local government areas where you cannot get to cause any issue of common interest. And so one more time, Okanafun has set the pace, and it is on that note that I want to acknowledge the chairman of the Okanafun Economic Development Committee, himself a corporate sector player of very many years of experience. Rector of the Shaw Foundation Polytechnic, Elder Dr. Idong Demasudum. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. If you think the UK EDC has done well, I think you can give them a better round of applause. Please put your hands together for them. By extension, we recognize all other members of the UK EDC. If you look through the program, you'll find the list of the people there but some of the finest minds, some of the best brains from this local government area, and including some of them who are not in the country, but thankfully due to technology have been able to make their contributions to this event. And uh, Mr. Nyakano Pana, Chairman of the uh, Summit Planning Committee, please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, legal practitioner of notes. Secretary of the UKDC, Mr. Imo Emma, is also here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. This um, gentleman needs, um, if, when I started emceeing events several years ago, I attended a training where someone who had done the job long before us said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, we acknowledge all other members of the UK EDC. Like I said, time would fail me to list them one after the other. But the printed program, you would notice that a good number of people that a good number of people um, have come. My attention has just been drawn to the fact that Her Excellency, the First Lady of the State, um, has sent a representative to this event, herself the coordinator of our pet project, Ferrib, and the wife of the Chief of Staff to the Governor. Distinguished ladies, and the wife of the Chief of Staff to the Governor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Ime Ephraim Iyang is here. Please put your hands together for her, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. We acknowledge the presence of the former House of Assembly member, former chairman, a great servant of Okanafu local government area, and a gentleman who is primed to play a very critical role in um, very many areas that concern Akwaibom State today and tomorrow. I will leave that for now. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the right honorable Nekan Akpan is here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, someone has already um, someone has already acknowledged the fact that this event has attracted a lot of heavy, a lot of heavyweights. I'll very quickly acknowledge the presence of those come from Okanafun, but maybe today wish they actually were indigents of Okanafun like myself from actually at this event. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is not every day that you find people from this part of the world rise to the position that this gentleman got to be Mr. Udum Inoyo is here. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much. A good number of people have started recognizing that they move around in parks. When you see one, you see the next person, you see the next person and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ini Utuk is the M. We've talked about capacity development, we've talked about capacity building, we've talked about people. Um, he doesn't handle the ticket sale, so please, when he's leaving, don't ask him how much you have to pay. Thank you very much. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have a whole, I'm um, the Honorable Commissioner in Akwaibom. 
If I do not recognize you, it means your face mask is too big. I almost didn't know he was the one seated. Honorable Barrister Prince Upong Akwabio is here. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. I've just been informed that a former member of the Federal House of Representatives, Obong Eno Akpan, is seated here in this building. Please put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Seated to his immediate right, former Federal Minister. Invite the Chairman of Summit to do a brief thematic presentation to His Excellency before we begin to put our gaze in, re in reverse for the gentleman to exit the place. Barristan uh, Ekanokbana. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me join previous speakers to welcome you to Okanafon and to the first Okanafon Economic Development. This unique summit is a hybrid event with physical and virtual participation of over 1,000 from different parts of Nigeria and around the world. Being asked by my colleagues at the UK EDC to chair the planning subcommittee for this epoch-making economic development summit is a privilege and invokes in me a deep sense of nostalgia. I say this because 45 years ago, my uncle, late Obong Barista Sukuo John Ukwana, was instrumental to the creation of Okanafon local government. And yet, another uncle of mine, late Obong Senator Akanenyan Rukwana, was the pioneer chairman of Okanafon local government area. And most of the structures that we see today within the council premises were constructed and built by late Senator Akaneyen Ukwana. So 45 years later, as a second generation of the founders of Okanafon, and being entrusted with the responsibility of organizing what I call Okanafon Renaissance Economic Development Summit, it is indeed nostalgic, truly a homecoming. I thank the incumbent chairman, honorable Pastor Godwin here, and the chairman and members, eminent members of the UKEDC for this trust. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the theme for the Economic Development Summit is repositioning Ukana Fund for Sustainable Development. The world is still grappling with the short-term impact of COVID-19 pandemic. This resulted in economic recession, business failures, dramatic reduction in household incomes. Government and business leaders are constantly refining their strategies to post-COVID recovery. There will no doubt be medium and long-term effects. And the pathway to mitigating their impact lies in identifying and focusing on the drivers of resilience. Thankfully for us in Akwa Ibom State, the economic transformation and industrialization policies of His Excellency Governor Demi Manuel's administration, which has made Akwa Ibom State an investment destination, are aimed at creating wealth and sustainable employment opportunities for Akwa Ibomites, particularly youths and women. Ukanafon Economic Development Committee considered a summit as a suitable platform to the future for leadership. Unfortunately, the social government authority and its people is eroding as citizens are gradually but steadily losing trust in their leaders and institutions. 
the summit will provide a platform for conversation around capacity building for delivery of good governance. A genuine commitment to good governance will certainly help in rebuilding trust. And to achieve, to achieve this requires strong leadership. The seminar will be structured around three sub-themes. We have taken the first one, which is education and capacity building for Canafon sustainable development. After this short interlude, after to allow for His Excellency to, to take his leave, having performed some of the things he's required to perform, we will have two more sessions in the afternoon. The second session will be on entrepreneurship as the catalyst for Canafon sustainable. While the third one will be on security which I think, we think, is an enabler for human and sustainable development. Discussions on each, each sub-theme presenter, followed by a panel discussion and interaction with participants through comments, questions, and answers. We are indeed pleased to have with us at the summit the faculty of presenters and discussions, and we thank them for their sacrifice and effort in being presenters and an epoch-making economic development summit. So I thank my presenters and panelists. Thank you very much. Our expectation is that after extensive and robust presentations and deliberations, participants across the three sub-teams, we are hopeful that the implementation of these recommendations will try Your Excellency, so that um, I learned journalism under the admirable tutelage of Mr. Moses Ekbo. <laughs> and whatever I have managed to become today in journalism is largely attributed to his mentorship. <laughs> I want to thank him also for his contributions to the success of the Udom Emmanuel administration. Even though loyalty is a very fickle and ephemeral quality in Nigerian politics, shown that he is a man of loyalty. That is, so we are happy, very happy, that he has honored us either by sending his delegation or by sending words of encouragement to us in Okanafon. A few weeks ago, I went to a market called Ura Panasek in Okanafon here. And um, I met a man there. Uh, he, I said to him, how are things? And he said, uncle, the ground is not level, but I'm standing on it. That's a very, very weighty statement. It reflects what is happening in Okanafon. The ground here is not level, but we are standing on it. Whether we're standing on it well or not is a different matter. In my recollection, this is the first time that Okanafon elites were not politicians uh, putting together a formal setting to look at how Canafon is, how it could be, and what is the way forward to taking it there. <laughs> the mission of Canafon Economic Development Committee can be likened metaphorically to an old woman who runs outside naked. By traditional folklore, it is assumed that either she has lost her grandchild or she has lost her snob box. That's why she's running out naked. We haven't lost our grandchild in Okanagan.
Thank you very much. I, I was thinking that you have just learned how a professional base his mind and that you would have made a, a louder round of applause for <laughs> Mr. Ray. <laughs> Pastor Godwin Inyeng would have said it differently. But that is the essence of Okanafun Economic Development Committee. Thank you very much, Uncle Ray. Your Excellency, it has come time for us to celebrate you. We are pained that we are going to do this so briefly. Uh, you have an intimidating uh, resume, which we have painstakingly managed to reduce to 60 seconds uh, and three sentences only. We hope you will also share some of the pain that has made us do this because time is not friendly. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the great people of Okanafun, let me invite His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, to please step forward to the restroom for an award of honor. <laughs> Unpretentious patron of corporate amity, your unparalleled toga of humility, and acclaimed aura of the typical team player are peerless in contemporary circles. Well-trained, seasoned reporter, consummate editor, and scholar of mass communication and information services, you have made the protection of our collective intellectual wealth your career and passion. Distinguished graduate of a special political class, public servant and seasoned administrator, we are proud to honor you today as a Tau Bawudum Ukanafun. May I ask the chairman of summit to invite the chairman of the local government area, the representative of Okanafun and uh, in the National Assembly, and our representative in the State Assembly, and chairman of UKEDC to make these presentations, please. You have done us proud. We are very proud of you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, congratulations, sir. We are going to ask you to do us a duty to please accept to carry His Excellency's award to him also. Um, I ask the representative of uh, Ukanafun people in the National Assembly to step forward and uh, help us make this presentation. Your Excellency, 
the governor of Aquarium Women's State, heavily represented by the deputy governor. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I consider it a great privilege and honor to present this award to His Excellency the Governor of Aquarium State, which will be received on his behalf by the Deputy Governor as Asinemem Ukanafun. Your Excellency, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, th this is a galaxy of uh, presentations. Let me invite, uh, with the kind permission of the Chairman of Summit, let me invite the Paramount Ruler of Kanafun, His Royal Majesty, to step forward and witness the presentation of his own souvenir to His Excellency the Governor. The souvenir will be presented by the Chairman of UKE, DC, but his, his Majesty would like to watch to be sure that it really will get to the governor. Uh, your, your Royal Majesty is going to go there. So that's why I want you to step forward and see it done so that you know that we are very good children and we did exactly what you wanted. He, he doesn't need to go up, so don't bother him. He, he can see from there. The presentation should be made now uh, from His Royal Majesty to His Excellency the Governor. I, on behalf of Okanafun people and the local government, do present, and also on behalf of the Paramanura, do present this award to His Excellency, the Governor of Aquaibom State, through the Deputy Governor. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Permit yeah. me to stand on the very robust protocol that had been enunciated here. And permit me to respect that protocol in totality because of lack of time or the want of it. Uh, there is a serious business that is ongoing here. And uh, I would like to mention everybody here by name, by office, by position, because of time or the want of it or the lack of it, I won't be able to do so, so that we can have sufficient time to really get onto the business that brought all of us here. How to make Ukanafun not in the Cameroons, but in Aquaibum State. I think that's why we came here. But let me take this opportunity to thank the organizers of this program. 45 years after, they have considered it not late, but important to do the catching up 
game. And I do know and I believe that by the grace of God, Okanafon will catch up. For me, it is not a coincidence that I should be here. I think it's providential. Because 45 years ago, I was very much part of what brought us another local government in our state, in Anang land. So I come here wearing two caps. I was invited in person as Moses Sekbo, not as deputy governor of Akwaibom State, because I belong here. I'm part of this organization. I'm part of these people. And I was also invited here as deputy governor of the state. But by providence, I'm here wearing these caps. As a matter of fact, until very late last night, the program was that my boss, the governor of Akwaibo State, Mr. Domi Manuel, and myself were going to be here in this program. There was a twist of happenings. Because you know, Nigeria moves like clock these days. Things happen in the minutes, things happen in the seconds. It isn't possible that the governor would be here. And I'm sure you all know that he ought to be here, that he was to be here, and he should have been here for the reason that have been explained earlier. That although he has his biological home in Ona, this is his home. He's unable to be here for very, very, very strong reasons beyond his control. And so he asked me to represent him in the first instance and take the opportunity of honoring the invitation that was given to me personally. He regrets his inability to be here and please that you'll accept his apologies and reassure you that his inability to be here does not mean that he does not appreciate the importance of this organization, the importance of what we're doing here today. On my own part, it's a great honor that you've given me this award. I take it as an award that is so significant for me as a person. I take it as an award that typifies that a prophet has honor in his own home. I want to thank the Okanafun people for this gesture and to assure you that this award will spur me to do much better that I need to do to contribute to the growth of this part of Anang land my home.
His Excellency, of course, had asked me to present this message. For me, it is not an address. It is a message. It is his contribution. It is his input into the discussion that you are having in this very, very important meeting which you've convened to search for the growth, continued growth of Ukanafun. Mr. Chairman of the summit, please permit me to read this message. I'm indeed excited to be invited to join you today at the Okanafun Economic Development Summit and the 45th anniversary ceremony of the creation of Okanafun Local Government Area, which is home to me and to a vast array of Akwaibum sons and daughters who are making waves in their world, across the world, flying the flag of our state very admirably. If you listen to the lead speaker here, uh, you will never doubt that there is a future for this place. The idea of an economic development summit set in the context of activity represented by the humble initiative, therefore, this must that say, has the potential to grow into a huge oak tree that can become a reference point beyond our shores. This is more so given the lavish, high network human resources of Ukanafun, who luckily have also traversed the world and amassed such expertise that can be put at the disposal of the local government area at a time like this. Your resource bases that you brought from everywhere, from among you, provide the basis for what you're doing here. Every parent takes delight in seeing his crawling child makes an effort, no matter how feebly at rising up to walk. Joyfully, he, receive, he reaches out to the toddler with a supportive hand. And as a state government, we will fulfill this role in advancing the cause of Ukanafun renaissance alongside every part of the great state. Let me therefore urge every Ukanafun son and daughter to rally behind this vision in order that we can actualize it. I thank you in a special way for the thoughtfulness of accommodating the memory of the late chairman of the People's Democratic Party the PDP, Abang Udo Ekwenyang, in today's scheme of things. Udo Ekwenyang was a dependable son of a Kwaibum of Ukanafun extraction and deserves all monuments we raise in his honor. I wish to also commend you for the other memorials which you have built or going to build and which you have built into this anniversary, it lost, illustrates the deep sense of history of the present generation of Okanafun people. It is also a measure of your commitment to leave guide at Okanafun to mark the events of this anniversary and to mark today 
I would like to say that for me, for me, continue what I started leading to four. You told me anytime you are coming, you will let me know. I came yesterday. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I, sorry about your station. Okay. Ah, I came to sorry. do nothing. Thank you very much. Well, well done. You survived it. Your you people fought back. Uh, I was so sad. I'm so happy, sir. And I tried to reach you at that time. Hey, Dave, what do you mean? How are you? Uh, yeah, you can fuck. I'm glad you're here. When would you have time? No, I have next week. For now? Next week. Next week. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, the bigger part of this ceremony will soon commence after the second part of our summit today. Please go and come as fast as possible. And of course, I'm going to be make sure that they push the launch forward.
Hey, my bad. All the shooting and killing in Ogo Bay. I swear, even fighting and bribing, no be the way. Why are we killing ourselves every day? Yo, yo, Yagi Maba, one love my brother, two love my sister. Let's come together and shine our light out. And forget about the story of the past, make you know what's in the matter. Oh, let's why one and Kanga, Mbrad and Tembrada, Iniso Girikbara, of Rus and Idara. Abasi Sasamo, Siamana, one and four Jamba. Happy heart and happy faces is a look we want to see on the people's faces. For the people of Ukana Fun and other places, oh, now so. Jagi Maba, he don't want you to Kana Fun, 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 ジャイブロキマジャイブロケメンジャイポンゴロゴキロンジャイメメバアフリマウォッチバクカナフォンイウォジャンマランマナトゥロゴロゴトゥロカナフォンイロンジレバイロンネケカナフォンイロンジャイ
a free more word. See back who can afford. You were young when I went through, would have got through. Can I put it on what you ever did? You don't want to make it. Can I put it on what you can afford? Can I put it on what you can afford? Can I put it on what you can afford? Youth. Nem para o agiro. Nem para o agiro. Nem o pai pagiro. Happy faces is 
say look we want to see on the people faces For the people of Ukana Fun and other places oh Na so Jagi Maba Kilomoji Ukana Fun Ilomoji Ne Pake Jagi Maba Kana Fun Ilomoji Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Meme Ba Kana Fun Ilomoji Jagi Maba Inje No E Turu Goro Go E Turu Mana Man Kana Fun Ilomoji Ne Pake Jagi Maba Kana Fun Ilomoji Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Maba Kana Fun Ilomoji Jagi Wawa Mbokte <laughs> Kana funi lo moji re ba ke. Kana funi lo moji. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi ma ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana funi lo moji re ba ke. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi me me ba. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi ma ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi ma ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana funi lo moji re ba ke. Jagi ma ba. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi me me ba. Jagi me ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana funi lo moji. Jagi wa wa. I'm killing in no pay. I swear, even fighting and bribing no be the way. Why are we killing ourselves every day? Yo, yo, Jagi Maba, one love my brother, show love my sister. Let's come together and shine our light up and forget about the story of the past. Make you know what's in the matter. Oh, let's wine one and kanga, brother and ten brother. He needs to drink baga of fruits and idara. Abasi so so no, si aman amu walan ko jamba o. Happy heart and happy faces is a look we want to see on the people faces. For the people of Ukana Fun and other places, oh, na so. Jagi maba, kilomoji do Ukana Fun, kilomoji ne ba ke. Jagi maba, Ukana Fun, kilomoji. Jagi me me, Jagi me me ba. Ukana Fun, kilomoji. Jagi maba, inje no. E turu goro go, e turu mana man. Ukana Fun, kilomoji ne ba ke. Jagi maba. Kana funi lo moji Kana <laughs> Ichenego, jagi me me ba o. Youth, jagi bono kima. Nem para wajiro, jagi bono kima. Nem bono wajiro, jagi bono kima. Ne upari pa jagi me me ba o. I swear, even fighting.
Nothing I'm grabbing, no be the way Why are we killing ourselves every day? Yo, yo, Yagi Maba One love my brother, show love my sister Let's come together and shine our light up And forget about the story of the past Make you know what's in the matter, oh Ooh. That's why I'm gonna gang up Brad and them brother In his own Greek bag of Ruth and Idara Abbasi saw some hoes Yeah man, I'm a one and four jamba hoes Happy heart and happy faces Is the look we want to see on the people faces For the people of Ukana Fun and other places Oh, na so Jagi Maba Ki Longoji Ukana Fun Ki Longoji Ne Ba Ake Jagi Maba Ki Longoji Ki Longoji Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Meme Ba Ukana Fun Ki Longoji Jagi Maba Nje No Eturu Goro Go Eturu Mwana Mwana Ukana Fun Ki Longoji Ne Ba Ake Jagi Maba Ukana Fun Ki Longoji Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Meme Ba Jagi Maba Ukana Fun Ki Longoji Jagi Wawa Ilonga, mbok jai maba. Green Star Records, you be on the beats. Ilonga, mbok dey kampot jai bono kima, jai bono kime, jai bongo logo kilonji, jai maba. Afri mo word, ziba ku kanafun. Iwo jang mara mara tru, guru guru tru. Kanafun ilonji, ilonji neke. Welcome back. May I have your attention? Thank you very much. Can we please be seated so that we can push ahead and round off as fast as possible? Please let us be seated so that we can rush through it and round up nicely. Very shortly, I'll be inviting a few gentlemen of the stage again
I am pleased. Uh, risen voice. Risen voice. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Jai bono kima, jai bono kemem, jai bongo lo go kilo hoje. Prison voice, jai me ba ba. Afri ma word, si ba ku kana fun. In as much as you have spent quite some time in the entire process of coming here. Hello, hello. Please try as much as possible and stabilize the microphone. We are wasting people's time, please. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I please apo? whatever inconvenience it is that you might be experiencing now. This was a special day. You came all the distance. You gave us all the time. It wouldn't take much to give us a little more time to do this properly, to round off, please. I want to assure you that as fast as possible, within the next hour and a half, we would have left this place. Nobody is going to stay here till 3 p.m. Nobody. Hello. While waiting for the microphone, I'm saying that by 3 o'clock, the only person that will left here will be those that will be sweeping the hall. <laughs> What's the matter? Reason boy, this is happening at a very wrong time. Oh. Uh, this one I don't understand. People want to go. The entire set is like he said as. It's, it's, it's like he said it's not really. Yes, sir. The break is from his microphone. Ah. Oh. And got them uh, from COVID-19 uh, injection on that. Ah. Ah. Eat up, eat up, eat up. Everybody is ready and waiting. Is it um, I mean, everybody is waiting. May I ask those that are distributing refreshments that while you were distributing at the back, some of the guests here in front were not here. Can you move refreshments to go around? Caterers, can you move refreshments to go around? Uh, 
mano. Bro. Tritsu. Three, two, one. Hello? Hello? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the microphones are back. Let us hope this will not happen again. We have today on our honors rule the following persons. Her Excellency Dr. Martha Udumi Emanuel, Right Honorable Anekan Etambasi, Senator Dr. Akone Yarenyi, Mr. George Inyangaite, Mr. George Inyangaite uh, is the skin of the dynasty. I see the second, or is it second or two? The second. Mr. George Inyangaite, the second. And uh, that will be just the panel for now. I would like to invite the presenter of this next paper, Entrepreneurship as a Catalyst for Canafone Sustainable Development. Imo Abasi Jacob, Chairman Ibum A, to please step forward. We will try as much as possible to keep this within 30 minutes, please, sir. And then let's see how, how we can juggle this and come out, everybody being happy. And I think everybody will be happy. We are doing this not for me. I just got to 60 years of age, retired permanent secretary, and coming home to stay on a permanent salary for the rest of my life. But I have cousins, I have younger brothers, I have distant relatives who troop to the house every day who have nothing to do. We are here to AK out a way for them for the future. And we want your support. A son of Okanafun sat there and made a commitment that he will help. If I know who was speaking, I know he will help. These are professionals who are trained to keep their word. And it's easy to help. Build capacity and encourage attitude, and then it will happen. I want us to also celebrate and think about our younger people. I stayed in this village for three years during the crisis, everybody ran away. I knew how it was to stay at home with the rest of us who were at home. Every evening from 4 p.m., it's a ghost town, and it looks as if all hell has descended. We are ha happy and lucky that this is changing, so why can't we sustain it? Let's talk. Yesterday at the town hall meeting, children, the younger ones came and said, there is no money for police policemen. It makes sense. A, a, a radical renaissance, a change of spirit. So let's encourage them. Let's do something to let them know that we also care. One day I want to see some of these young people become the award winners when we are no more there. So come and encourage them too. I'm happy that you all have come and I want to assure you, your coming to Okanafun today will not be in vain. So thank you very much for your time. The chairman of Ibum A epitomizes the success story of a Ibum State Government at this point when even the Nigerian nation has no airline. Boom A is making waves. Please, sir. Thank you very much. You have the floor. Thank you very much. I have enjoyed myself, and I declare that this is the best place to be at this time. Um, I meant to talk to us um, on a subject, entrepreneurship as a catalyst for the sustainable development of Okanafun. I thought about it, should I give a paper on entrepreneurship or should I give a training? I was not sure. So I came with a snippet of our training 
uh, program on entrepreneurship. But it was when I came and I saw the crowd outside that I knew that there is a need to train. To train entrepreneurship, train entrepreneurs, because the cry we have from the outside is not a celebration. It's not a celebration, it's a Macedonian cry. Come over to Macedonia, come over to Kanafun and help us. And the best to respond to such a cry is an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur thinks besides himself. He thinks about a market, a market of people. He thinks about employees. He thinks about uh, critical stakeholders. He can take out the crowd from the streets and put them on shop floors, on factories, and have them provide service to humanity. My hope, sincere hope, is that within this hall, we have the people who can maybe get triggered off, maybe get excited about entrepreneurship. Maybe you are already an entrepreneur and you want to reject, to do something so that you can give back to Kanafun and take out the guys on the street and put them on shop floors and put them on factory uh, and industries. So I'm going to do a snippet of a training within the time available. I can stop at any point in time. I hope you will enjoy it. Um, my first word is that a small opportunity like this is usually, usually the beginning of great enterprises. So you may have come as a guest, may have come as a, a participant. Maybe there's something we're going to touch here that would help you to reject or help you to start. So I ask that you pay attention to some of the things we're going to say. Some you may have unknown already, but we are here to get you started. I was meant to cover this, but um, time not available. I would just go through the best I can. Now, the first thing to do when we talk about entrepreneurship is to recognize the power of entrepreneurship. The culture of entrepreneurship is what runs the world economies, from the largest to the smallest. If you take out entrepreneurs, if you take out entrepreneurship, you will not have an economy. And they make maximum contribution to the growth and advancement of nations, of states, and perhaps of local government areas. The statistics are there for you to judge for yourself. In the UK, the largest employer of labors has very small Mickey Mouse type of enterprises. Not even the big system can compete. India is high, as high as 90%, and they contribute the most to GDP. But we have a large presence of informal sector in Nigeria, which are not very well harnessed in their operations, and of course their contributions in those areas are shredded. They're not harnessed. But if we do something like putting people in a, a room like this and talk to them about entrepreneurship, perhaps we'll improve our processes. Now, when we talk about the sustainable development of uh, Okanafun, it must start with the rise of the entrepreneurial class. The rise of entrepreneurial class. These are the people who will put together pro production processes, who would find new markets, who would introduce new techniques and technology, who would take the risk in very uncertain environment, and who would rise to make this place a great place to be. So I hope I'm talking to that class. I hope someone would be my megaphone, even if you are not going to be an entrepreneur. I hope you sit your child or your children down and talk to them concerning entrepreneurship. I hope the uh, Okanafun Economic Okanafun Economic Development Committee would use this as, um, as um, a first step to organizing a proper, well kitted entrepreneurship workshop where you would teach people the, uh, the building blocks of an enterprise. Now, reason we need, there's a question we need to ask ourselves why do we need to start a business? Why a business? Someone once said, Robert Stevenson said, everyone lives by selling something. 
you have something to sell. I have something to sell. You've been selling something, but how come nobody is simple? You are selling, but you are not building a business around it. Many of us are talented. You are skillful in one area or the other. God has been very uh, careful to distribute this gift to us. But until and unless you build an enterprise around it, you die alone. You sing your song alone. You are the best choir master, but you don't have a musical company. You are the best atlas, but you don't have a, uh, a, a, a sports shop. You are the best in your little corner, but you are not able to bring more people into an enterprise. And then that way you would affect and make greater impact. But for you to start a business, you need to consider three uh, paradigms, three dimensions. One is, who am I going to serve? You're talking about your market, the customers. What am I going to do? What am I going to present? What is my offering to the market? You're talking about products or services. How am I going to do it? Those what who, what, and how are very important in entrepreneurship. But the most troublesome is the how. A lot of people know who they're going to sell to, what they're going to sell. But how do I put together a robust system that will be able to deliver and deliver maximum result? And that's where this single matter of building a business as opposed to starting a business comes to play. Building a business system or having a business model that will be able to organize resources, organize production, and deliver value to the customer. And I'm going to spend the rest of the presentation to talk about the business system, hoping that it will help us to reject if you're already an entrepreneur or to not make the mistakes of those who start and not have a system. Why build a business system? What is a business system? The best way to understand it is to have a look at this um, quadrant from the book by Robert Kiyosaki called Cash Flow Quadrant. It simply tells us four ways people make money and the best among the four. On the left hand side you have the E which stands for employee. Employee makes money by going to work every day and earning on a daily monthly basis. R is stands for safe employed. These are people who are very fed up with their formal employment and they want to be their own boss. But on the right hand side, you have a B. A B is a business system owner who owns a business system. Not a business, but a business system that employs uh, much more people and adds much more value. The I starts for an investor. According to this book, those on the left hand side who struggle financially because they have nothing but themselves. An employee will struggle until 30 days after he will not have a dime flow into his cash cash um, uh, into his treasury and whatever is flowing into his treasury is limited is limited is fixed by his um, um, uh, employment later and after many years of work he would have to leave the scene he will be retired he might die in active service and what happens to his cash flow all that will be truncated sometimes he's mad enough and said oh, I don't want to work for somebody I want to work for myself he's a safe employed person until he goes to work, he cannot make money. When he's sick, his business is sick. When he travels, his business travels. And he struggles even though he is his own boss. And time and age may disappoint him. After a while, his energy level may not support him. That's why today you can't find a 90-year-old mechanic still making money. But a 90-year-old business owner can still be earning dividends. And according to this author, he said, we should move. No matter where you find yourself in life, where you start, if you start as an employee or a self-employed person, you should take your eyes to the right, where you have the business owner. This business owner simply has a business idea, brings people to it, builds a system, they make money for him. While they yet work, he makes money. Whether he is retired or not, he keeps making money. Later in the presentation, I will show you an example of such. On also on the right hand side is the I, the investor. What do investors do? They recognize successful business system and put their extra cash there. So that while those guys are working, they're working for them. For example, if you are a shareholder in GTB, Guaranteed Trust Bank, you don't need to go to the bank every day to work with the workers. You stay in your house. At the end of the year, they pay you dividend. That's what does happen for those who operate from the right hand side. 
But I'm going to take the B and discuss because that's what concerns us here. Don't start a business, build a business. Don't start a business, build a business. It's easier to start a business than to build a business. What makes a business system is what I'm going to discuss uh, hereafter. But before I do that, let me ask a simple question. Why don't we have transgenerational businesses? Why don't we have businesses from the first generation to even the fourth generation? The answer is revealed in these statistics. In the U.S., only 60% of businesses started survived the first generation, 30% the second and the third generation. So if, even in an advanced economy like that, you will see that the uh, fatality rate for new businesses is high. The reason we don't have these transgenerational businesses is because they lack a business system. They don't have a system that can outlast the owners. You know, if you look around, around our climb here, you may have heard of great businesses in the past, but today they are not there. Utuks, Yangete, and so on and so forth. Road Tune, and all those people that were making money in their time. What we are here for is to build a business that would outlast us. To build a business that will bring those guys in. We train them, we remold them, we clone them so that they can succeed us. And it's been done and it can be done. Robert Kiyosaki had this. He said, just like a builder, a building contractor uses tradesmen, such as plumbers, electricians, carpenters, to build a house. An entrepreneur brings in different tradesmen to help him build a business system. What an entrepreneur has is just an idea, an idea about how the business should be remodeled, how the business should be structured, and then call people to interpret that dream and then build with him. First thing to know about the business system is the DNA of the business. Every business has its own DNA. Today we're talking about Ibom Air. Ibom Air is a DNA that is different from every other airline. That is what they're selling. They're selling some features that you can't find in other airlines. The way they organize from A to Z communicates differently to the traveling public. And that's why they're getting their patronage today. They're having a, 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 a paradigm shift in their value, business value system and business modeling. We'll talk more about this as we look at great examples of business system. But why do we need to build a business system? Because it's the only thing that makes money. You can start a business, make money today, tomorrow you are no more. A business system is attractive not only to customers but also to capitalists. Those who have money to invest in your business as you found in that, um, I mean, if you are a self-employed person, your ability to make money is limited to your own capacity. But the business system multiplies capacities, brings so many people and they, 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 they turn the meal and be able to generate enough returns for the owner. Only a business system outlasts the founders. And I'm sure we are here to do something that is more than personal. I'll just give you an example of some business system. Look at the chart. Coca-Cola. What are they selling? Water. Colored water. And sugar. But today they make more money because they're building a business system over that simple product. You can sell water. You can sell colored water. You can add sugar in it. But you cannot have a Coca-Cola because a Coca-Cola is a system. Microsoft is a system. Apple is a system. These are different examples of businesses. And they all started as little mustard seed. But they understood the power of a business system, of defining processes, defining how that business must be known and read by the market, defining what they are offering is to the market and staying true to their promises. The truth is that only business only the very rich in the world today are made rich by business system if you look at the chart of the richest persons 2020 you can go back in history and chart it amazon what is the business of amazon they started as a supermarket but look at the phenomenal wealth that is producing to produce the number one wealthiest person uh, LVMH is a luxury line uh, merchant. It's a business system. Microsoft, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook. The rich all made money from a business system. Let me ask you a question. The top, the top most athlete who is making money in his own right cannot occupy the first 20, the first 100 on the list of the very rich. Why? 
He is an S. He's operating from the left hand side of the of the quadrant. He will make money while he's talented enough to keep um, doing what he's known best to do. But a time is coming when he will depend on uh, um, doing some advert and doing things like cannot bring much more money. Of course, he's limited because his health, his um, strength is failing with age, and he cannot produce as much money as a man who put together a business system and can still make money even while he's gone. He will transfer it to his uh, children. Now, the acid test. How do I know that I have a business system? This same book, Robert Kiyosaki, I think in cash flow, I mean, I reach that, poor that, said this, he said, if your answer to this question is yes, then you have a business system. It asks, can you leave your business for a year or more and return to find it more profitable and running better than you left it? How many of us can answer yes? Can I see your hand? So that we can call the preacher to, uh, to pray for repentance. Many of us are making money, but we cannot answer this question. And it, it's nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be dissatisfied with, but it all shows you that you still have work to do. The end game is to build a system that would outlast you. You can leave, do politics, still come back, your business will make more money than ever before. That's what Bill Gates did. He left, started foundation, now the business kept making money. That's the acid test of a business system. Because of time, I need to fast track and move to uh, something that is very dear to me. OK, it's like the point I want me to talk about this, OK? Okay? The opportunities, the business opportunities are beckoned on us. I thank God for the earlier presenters who were able to show us what is happening around the state and they need to prepare. They need to be ready. When we're driving into Okanafun, I hadn't been here for a long time. I was excited about the vegetation. I saw behind the thick bushes, ranches, Agri, commercial agriculture, palm trees in their old age, beckoning for attention. I saw the need for us to democratize industries, bring them from the center of the state to the hinterland. The governor made that in his uh, statement. I saw the need for this, not only the sons and daughters of Okanafu, but lovers of businesses to come and partner here. So I'm going to show you something that has to do with the richness, the riches that God has surrounded us with. But we need the eyes to see. One of the things that entrepreneurs do is that they constantly look for opportunities. Even in the midst of problems, even in the midst of complaint, many people complain, but entrepreneurs analyze. They see opportunity. Opportunity is always difficulties in workload. It's always something shredded that ordinary eyes cannot um, see. So are you an entrepreneur? This is what they do. They actively exploit changes in the world. The first speaker talked about the changes that is coming to us by reason of COVID. The opportunities to work now is different, and we have comparative advantage you know, in that. They see problems. The others see problems. They recognize opportunity. They train their minds to recognize opportunities. Entrepreneurs use their imagination to conceive a business idea. This land is good. Aquaibum is good. When you drive out of the airport, there is future industries that exist only in the minds of only those who can see. There is, if even looking at the army of youth outside there, that's a potential, not just labor, a work potential market. If their income levels is improved, they can increase their purchasing power. Where's gold mine? And like you should know, gold cannot be found on the surface. It's beneath the earth. It's a call to Kanafun sons and daughters to look at this land of opportunities from the state to the local government. I'm glad and I'm excited that this is done at the local government level. In fact, what you have done 
will be a standard for other local government areas. I've told my people that we're going back home to copy your template. I hope you wouldn't mind. You wouldn't ask for copyright protection. Because this is, this is what is needed. Just one man to start it. A flicker of light is all we need. And you have done it. And we thank you for doing that. And God will bless you with our successes. Okanafon must join this trend. There's a revolution in our state today. You know, many times when we hear the government talk about industrialization, people are quick to criticize what they have not seen. They are quick because of their mindset to say something contrary to reality. Look at the various industries that government has pointed the way. The business of government is not to do business. It's to create an enabling environment. But in a upstart situation like we are here, sometimes government takes the strategic step to start and to show that it can be done. But he's beckoning on private sector people to partner and to join with them. Look at the army of industries. Look at the industries that are in the wing. And like the earlier speaker said, what are you taking out of this? Each of them has advantages, has promises, it has opportunities. But it will not be if you keep criticizing it, if you don't analyze it, the landscape of our city is changing. Senator Supana, when he held sway over the investment uh, agency, Akikop, you know, came up with this theme, soon become an industrial society. So we're still singing that song. We can see it. We can feel it. Akwaibom is fastly becoming an industrial city. But the truth of the matter is that if we don't rise up to seize the moment, others, and they are coming in Okanafun, would take advantage. I, I could have shown you this, but this is in your materials. You can look at it. The various raw materials. Until you open the book and read it, and take it to mind, and plan, and run with it, it becomes just an academic exercise. You know, um, our state is blessed in various ways. Oh my God. Okay. We can do great things. Food canning. You know, I, I was glad about the case study. Somebody is uh, exporting food. You know, taking advantage of uh, the pandemic. Every local government, this is a study that chronicles the resources that are available at the local government level and what industries they can um, make of it. Sometime back, we try to engage local main authorities, to, uh, you know, just like you are doing here, uh, my boss, uh, Senator Sukbana, we try to host them. A lot of them shied away. They were not interested to talk about business. They were talking about location, talking about, you know, uh, those kind of things. But I'm glad about your chairman. I like the way he spoke. You know, I've never seen such, such, maybe, maybe it's his ministry that is, uh, you know, it's, it's organized. So you are coordinated. I mean, I have no reason that working with these uh, private sector people, uh, the sky is not the limit for Okanafun. You will go beyond the sky. All right, so this is Okanafun. Um, Palm production, cassava processing, um, wood clusters, metal fabrication, fish clusters, and all that. These are natural resources that can be converted. You know, look at that, those, the virgin land that we have around about it. What are you going to do with it? What would you tell God when time is done? He's giving us everything. So I just wanted to show this to say to us, apart from what the government is doing at the center, locally here, there's a call for the sons and daughters of Okanafun to rise to the faith of greatness. But let me, Mr. Coordinator, uh, just do this. This is my, my base game, financial literacy. The challenge we have is that all of us could become entrepreneurs today if we are financially literate, if we are financially literate. A high percentage of educated people venture into business, but they are financially illiterate. Resources in your hand can become the biggest problem for you and your generation, except you know the language of money and how to use it for greater... Um, so I'm going to take a few, um, a few tips on financial literacy. Financial literacy is just about how to use money, the knowledge on how money works and how to use money so that you be an entrepreneur that is not losing but gaining much more. But let me show you a few of the tips. First, 
is to have a sense to know that one naira in your hand must become 10 naira someday. That's the mathematics. How many of us would have become billionaires today if we go back in time? You've handled money that over time, today you'll be counting in millions, if not billions. But what does uh, a business system person do? He looks at the one naira in his hand as a seed and says, according to the parable of talents in the Bible, that he must gain 100% productivity. 100 naira, the same thing, must become 1,000 naira. 1,000 naira must become 10,000 naira. 10,000 naira must become uh, 100,000 naira. 100,000 naira must become 1 million naira. That's how we become millionaires. You know, you cannot be a millionaire if you don't make that additional 1 naira to your 999,999. It just take 1 naira to cross that threshold. But how you deal with that 1 naira today will determine whether you ever become a millionaire. This is a must for every entrepreneur. So I'm going to show you some tips. Uh, number one, money is a store of value. It's not something you toy with. It carries value that can outlast today. So when you are handling money, ask yourself, what value am I going to create with it? Of course, you use it for exchange. That, those are the two primary functions of money. They're not to be spread at, at uh, functions. I don't know where we got that from. A serious entrepreneur will not do that. I have resisted that temptation. And I think God is helping me. But I don't know whether he will continue to help me. Because almost everybody else is doing it. Money, there's a Parkinson law that says that expenses always rise to meet income. I have 10,000 Naira today. I'm able to live with it. But if my income increases to 100,000 Naira, I will find out that I still have needs. So control your expenses. Don't fall a victim to this madness of spend, spend, spend. Idle cash is useless. Money not used is money useless. A lot of us keep money in a current account. We flaunt it. We keep it even in our wallet. That money must be put to work. Remember the parable of the talent. The guy who kept his talent was, a, was, was rebuked. He didn't steal it. I'm sure he wasn't a Nigerian. He didn't steal it. But it was still rebuke. In that parable, the Lord said, you could have put my money in the bank. That at my coming, I would have received it with uh, interest. So money that you are storing away without putting it actively to use is useless. Number four, managing one naira and one million naira and one naira. I've said that it takes additional one naira to reach one million naira. Saving for the rainy day is not a good thing to do. Because if you save for the rainy day, the rain will surely... Come, so you save for investment. Many of us are bombarded daily by opportunities to buy land, but we say, oh, we don't have money because you were not prepared. You didn't save, you didn't put money in an investment account that when those opportunities knock on your door, you just deploy them. Don't save for the rainy day. Rainy day like, oh, I want to save for burial, I want to save for that, those kind of expenses. Retirement planning starts from the day you start your work, not at the end. Let money work for you and not you for money. That's the whole idea about the right-hand side of the quadrant where you have the business system and the eye. Spend money with a, a, a compound interest sense. All of you did compound interest and in, uh, simple interest. A compound interest is that I will not eat the interest. I will compound it. Principal plus amount. Uh, principal plus interest equals amount. But a simple interest mentality is that, oh, any profit that comes out of my business, let me blow it. After all, it's a reward for my service. No. You have to compound it until it becomes so big a system that even the fraction of interest you are uh, eating would be much for a, life, a lifetime. Draw up a financial plan. For, uh, money respects a plan. Respect records. Don't fly blind. Practice good financial habit. You know, the way you spend your money reveals your personality. You know, in financial planning, we usually tell people that if you want to know a man, look at his checkbook. What you spend your money to do reveals your heart. And that's why Jesus said, what is in your heart? <laughs> you know, is the real you. You know, whatever is in your heart. So I can look at you and I say, how did you spend the last fortune that God brought your way? And that will describe you. Seek help from advisors. Don't spend old money until new money comes. Many of us are bombarded with this malaise. You're expecting a contract. You're expecting a payment. And you start blowing all the money that you had in the kitty. What if there's a small delay? Allow the new money to come and meet the old money. 
is a concept of old and new corn. We don't finish the old corn. We wait for the new corn. And the new corn will become an old corn. You know, I say to people, the best entrepreneurs are farmers. They practice investment in the farm. They don't eat the best of their yam. They eat the broken one. They keep the best yam for future planting and future harvest. Sorry, bear with me for a moment. I'm going to run. Save whether you spend or you earn. Our attitude should be to save. Look at the whole ecosystem. It's a saving culture that is preserving this. Even posterity. It's a saving culture. If you don't save, you won't get a child. If you don't save in a woman, you won't get a child. So everything works by, by saving whether you spend. You save as you spend. Do you know you can save as you spend? Look for cheap things. Look for uh, promotionals. Look for sales. Buy at that time. Delay that urge to buy when the prices are up, up, up. Save as you earn. That is easy. A percentage of your, your earnings should be put aside for investment. Save by doing it yourself. Many of us hire people to do simple things like laundry because you're a big man. I do my laundry today. You can change the oil in your car. It costs from five, ten thousand naira to change those oil. But you can do it yourself. What are you? Are you doing it because you don't have money? It's a mentality. It's a mentality. Your children will copy it. And in learning to do, you can invent. You can become something. Now, multiple income stream is important. Don't sleep on one side of the bed. Make sure you have income streams so that if the economy upturns one way or the other, you'll be able to still uh, be relevant. The power of financial records, very important. The financial records is your report card. When you were in school, you used to collect report cards at the end of the term. But today, the report card that follows you is your financial statement, your bank statement, your balance sheet. If somebody looks at your balance sheet after many years of work, what would that balance sheet tell us? Would it tell us that there is growth or there is diminishing return? Um, think before you spend. I would leave tyranny of enough and low income. Um, uh, yes, if you can, the, the law of multiplier, uh, multiplier effect, if you can't rule over one million naira, you cannot rule over a thousand naira. It all takes attitude to do so. I'm going somewhere. Uh -huh, the power of the dot. Now, this is very important. When you are looking at your financial system, you, all that you are doing is to manage the zeros. It's the zeros that is the problem. One naira, everybody can get that. But would I add one zero to one naira to get ten naira? Would I add two zeros to my uh, one naira to get hundred naira? Would I add three zeros to my one naira to get one thousand naira? So business system people manage zeros. They're just looking at their financial statement. They're looking at how they declare their sales. They're looking for that additional zero. Have that at the back of your mind as you're running that business. It's a business of generating zeros. The most zeros you generate will move from 100 to 1,000 net, from 1,000 net to million net, from million net to uh, trillion net, and so on and so forth. I will leave um, productive and non-productive as I said because of time. Training on financial literacy, please. Make sure you grab a book on this and read. I'm going to leave this because of time. OK. Now, the God factor. We can say all we want to say. We can do all we want to do. But we should remember that God is interested in your business. He's interested in your financial welfare. He's interested in our economy. You know, that's why in Deuteronomy 8, 18, he said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that, uh, that do what? That given thee power to get well, that he might fulfill the covenant which is swear unto thy fathers, and it is... Uh, Today, anybody who no know God will find God at work. May not be against him. That's why even today, those who don't know God, who don't practice the Christianity we practice, do things that God would like to do. What do you call social, uh, corporate social responsibility? They make so much money, but they say, if we don't do good to others, maybe we will not continue to make this money. But you, a Christian, start with God, work with God, and I can assure you that you will end with God. He who, plan, he who fails to plan, actually, that's the key, financial planning. Now, let me end. The end game is to create wealth. 
Why are we doing all this to create wealth? To create new income levels, income distribution that would deal with the problem that we have outside. Those guys are ready. It's a powerful workforce, powerful market. So we create wealth for these people. And then, of course, the pipe that carries water will always remain. Wait, you would look back at your life work. Someone, I think, um, uh, Hewitt Parker, when he was asked, he said, I am glad at what we've done. We've put together a great enterprise. And that at the end of my life, I've looked back to say the things we believed have helped generations. And we can look back and see people are still running with that fire that was burning in their bones. That's why we're here. We're here for something less than, more than personal, rather. Something for, for, for humanity. Entrepreneurs are not selfish people. They exist for the sake of uh, others. In conclusion, I would like to say to Okanafun, thank you for this baby step. It's one in a, a number of steps to come. A five-star entrepreneurship for me is the road ahead for you. Would you travel that? If you do, you will fulfill your own parable of talents. I know the professionals here have given their talent, they've given their time, they have impacted us. They are on the way to receiving from the Lord on their last day. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Come and share the joy of the Lord. But my advice, don't bury your talent. Don't die full. Die empty. Make sure everything God has in you is given. The best way to give is to form a business, is to be an entrepreneur. They give much more. The clothes we are wearing today is an offering from entrepreneurs who put aside their seed capital. They, they, they went without the leisure, the comfort of life to buy or invest in machines. Otherwise, today we'll still be wearing skin, animal skin, and riding on horseback. Every business is a sacrifice by someone who hopes better for you, but he makes money in the process. Taking the next step is critical. I ask all of us here, who would you like to represent? Who would you like to represent on this slide? Are you the guy here who is close but uh, is still a spectator? And there's no difference between him and this. But look at this guy. It won't be long. And I like what the chairman says. He said, next year we are coming back here. And I said, that's a prophecy, sir. That building will be up and running. Next year we are coming for a different kind of, a different kind of uh, event to celebrate entrepreneurship. The best time you could have planted a seed was yesterday. The next best time is today. Avoid procrastination. I said to the uh, organizers of this uh, forum, you don't have time to wait. In fact, your work has started. You have just reported yourself to uh, Okanafun people. And they, you will not rest until like the chairman of uh, like uh, Ray said, Uncle Ray, like the whole of Okanafun looks like uh, this place. And there will be no partition between us and them that are outside. Because we will have a big hall. We can do conferencing. We can do cloud uh, presentation. And every Okanafun sons and daughter can uh, plug in. I believe it is achievable with God on our side. I want to end with this young man's statement to all of us. I'm sure you should know it by heart now. The road will not be easy. For the good of our nation, Nigeria, we we'll we'll push forward rising higher together we're destined for greatness akwaibum medakanda edakeda it has happened before we were in the hall and then the man said uh, after a very long lecture he said, finally. So everybody thought that was going to be it. So and finally, we waited another 30 minutes, and he said, in conclusion. 
and went on for another 30 minutes and then he said before I sit down <laughs> on a very serious note uh, I like the chairman of Ibum A he said we should look for opportunities around us Okanafun people he, he does not he does not have uh, uh, a washerman he washes his dresses. So if you set up a, a dry cleaning business next to his house, he won't pass you to go and wash his clothes alone. What we are saying is that uh, it behoves us, therefore, everybody, young or old, who can afford or not, to look for opportunities around you, to see what you can make out of it. These are the kind of advice we need to ginger ourselves and ginger our people. I wish we could have all that time to sit down with you and talk, but you did an extra thing which has made me happy. We here in Ukanafu, we were groomed in Sunday school. We were groomed, our parents groomed us in the corridors of the church. God was put forward as the only foundation we have. And for a highly successful, forward-looking, professional like you to stand here and say you can't do all of this, can't get all these extra dots without God, sends a message to my younger brothers and sisters. Whatever we do, let us remember, there is a being ahead of us, bigger than us, who, if we do what he wants, can propel us to higher heights. That is why you had to clap for the chairman. He's a pastor. So he has a little fear of God in him and tries to do some good things here and there. So why won't God smile on him? Uh, uh, a team more. We are very grateful. Uh, next year, we want you to come. And uh, with a small package, we are willing to take opportunities. Give us some opportunities in Ibom A. Challenge you can have use and say, okay, these 10 slots, I challenge you to pick it up and see if any of these you can have with sons won't train another you can have with child to be a hero hostess. And See if one, two, three, four, can have sons will sponsor and can have girl to be a pilot. <laughs> Challenge us. Bring the opportunities to us and see what we can do about it. Elder uh, Nekan Write it down or tell the reporters to write it down. Ibum A is willing to encourage the first economic summit by any local government area in this state by ensuring that they do something practical for us. <laughs> and if we don't do it, Come back and tell us we, we gave you an opportunity and you failed us. We are willing to pick up the gauntlet and let Amego can have him proud, even in the boom air. Thank you very much. Can we give him another round of applause? Thank you very much, sir. When, when discussions are as good as this, what else can we add? But uh, I know a song by a Nigerian artist that says, I concur. So even if it's just too good, you can still concur. Wow. Dr. Paul, anything to concur? <laughs> we leave the floor to you, sir. Hello. I, I thank the Okanafon people for the opportunity given to me. I, I thank the Okanafon people for the opportunity given to me to be here today. It's a privilege, a very big one at that. Now, when the last presenter was uh, making his speech, there's something I understood that entrepreneurship is not a standalone endeavor, it desires conscious and rational thinking towards achieving it. So right now that we are here, before we leave, let us do something concrete. Let us decide here and now. So right here, I would suggest and strongly too that there should be a foundation for any articulate young Okanafun um, person that has finished university and that has a capacity to develop 
any idea of interest to him such that such a person would access such funds and then perhaps pay back in several years to come. Now, why do I say several years to come? Entrepreneurship is not a decree. You don't just, it evolves. It's development evolves. There are challenges. There are hiccups. So, whenever somebody starts something, please don't expect immediate result. And please let me even for one. I thank the organizers for this. But don't expect immediate result. Don't. China we all have today. In the 70s, China was even worse off than what we are today. The miracle of China started about three, uh, about three decades ago. So the thing, the seed we are sowing today, I want, we think, we expect to reap the result in the next 10 years. Because if we put our mind in the immediacy, we'll be disappointed. So once again, I thank you for the opportunity given to me. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it still goes to buttress the fact that uh, you came enough to give us the hints that much a photographer, photographer, if you can help me have eye contact with the presenters, I appreciate it. If you even move over to where your colleagues are, I will really be happy. Please. Photographer, can you help us move over? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, immediacy sometimes is caused by frustration. You, you look forward to something so much, you, you want it to be a miracle. You have a boy, you nurse the boy, and then you go to a hospital, and they start treatment, and the next day you want it to be over. It, it wasn't a miracle. There has to be some slow healing until eventually you are healed. We, we have accepted, we have hate, we will wait. But also the action will commence right now. In uh, the second, all through the discourse, you were turning from one side of the chair to another. And I knew that something was really bothering your mind. What was it, sir? Tell us. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to be part of this discourse. Uh, the speaker has spoken excellently a well-known consultant, one of the best in the field, I can tell you. I've been one of his students in the past. He's trained uh, my team severally when he was in Haggai Business School. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. And uh, let me also thank the, the organizers, the UK DC, uh, DC uh, UK EDC. You've done excellently well. I think many other local government areas will take a cue from what you have done today. And uh, it will become a uh, uh, something of a reference point when you talk about economic development. Let me just add one or two things. Identifying of economic opportunities sometimes arises from challenges. So I, I want to advise the, the team that the first speaker spoke about suggested that you form a team, a committee that will start immediately, just like Prof. said. Now let there be a deliberate, intentional, and integrated strategic program that will design development of people that will fit into opportunities that you have identified. And um, may I say that most of these opportunities you see, they are challenges as we see them now. Each entrepreneur who is worth his salt will know that what he is doing or what he has excelled in has been what people saw as a challenge, a major challenge. I'll tell you what we've done in the last couple of years. I, I I developed a program for ExxonMobil, which I managed for, a couple, for two phases, and we developed youth in entrepreneurship and in employability enhancement. In this state, one of the best corporate social responsibility programs of ExxonMobil Nigeria. Uh, thankfully, uh, Mr. Odomi, uh, you know you, who is who's just gone, was here. He was the brain behind that program. And we got 70% 
success rate at the end of the program. As I speak to you, I believe 100% of those people, about 750 youth, are all engaged as I speak. I remember a young man who made a 2-1 in electrical electronics engineering, and he came into that program for 10 years. He didn't have a job. 10 years. Not 10 days. 10 years. 2-1 in electrical electronics engineering. What did we do? Simple. We re reoriented them. We reoriented their mindsets. And at the end of that program, just six months of work, being trained, being given the skills, and placing them to have an exposure in industry. The young man got a job for the first time and in a very good place. In fact, one of the first that worked in the airport project. Was, and when I went to see the commissioner for, at that time, special duties, uh, he, he said, George, we don't do it. I said, no, no, I'm not coming to beg you. I'm bringing you the best. So he looked at the list of those who took the exams. He saw the first three were gap trainees. The first position, the second and the third, they were all products of the program. We insisted on quality and standards. I can go on and on to tell you the challenges we faced before we could get that program through with these shadows. But I thank God. Every day at the airport, I see one of them. Who comes to say, sir, sir I, you, I was batched so, so, so and so, doing very well. Many of them. A young lady came. She was completely disorganized. Many of them come out and they don't know how to apply the field they study in real, real life. So these are some things I want you to look at, how to build capacity. The young lady came. He wanted to go back and study medicine. I said, what is wrong with you? Study one of the biological sciences. I just spoke with her for about 40 minutes. And we found out this was one of the, he took second position in her batch. And today she's working with Zenith Bank. So we, in, in one way to talk about entrepreneurship, it's not only just preparing for self-employment, like he said. There's what we call entrepreneurship, which is building that entrepreneurial competence for the private sector, for the corporate world as well. So all these are things we need to think when you sit as a committee to build what you will put together for the people coming. So let me just end by saying that I will, I will be willing to support in any way in capacity development of the youth because I'm very impressed at what you've done here, sir. I'm really impressed. And I will keep saying and I believe this is a starting point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Nyamekte, the second, and Professor, uh, this is music to our ears. Where is the chairman, Sami Planning? Chairman Sami Planning, go to that microphone with uh, due re all due respect. That's what they used to tell us in the civil service. We want to say something to a big man. Say, with due respect, sir. <laughs> he won't get angry. With due respect, sir, take that microphone before I ask for a one-minute summary and we move on to the first set of awards. There will be two set of awards. Our friends, whom we have chosen to celebrate, and then ourselves, whom we've all sense of urgency. Inside of me, I can't wait. He couldn't wait. Yanaiti had to make a commitment. Go deeper and affirm this commitment. Ask here and now. One, two, three, four, can I have young men? Let them stand up. The problem with uh, having a good moderator is that... Let them stand up. Let us see them. Uh, Let us know them. Yeah. Let us start the work from them. Mm. Mr. Chairman, you have one minute. I was saying... <laughs> I, I was saying that... Uh, the, 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 the good thing about having a moderator like my brother and a professional, we like to be action part. And we need to be action part. I'm actually, both he and myself are trained by the presentation on entrepreneurship. And I'm, I'm so moved by the excitement started by the lead presenter and the commitment of the discourse. And I want, to, I want to do a simple thing, taking a cue from my brother. If you're under 30, you finish school and you have nothing to do and you want to be an entrepreneur, let me see you. If you're under 30, Body, we are talking about the character of tomorrow. If you are 50, okay, if you don't have under 30 and you have under 30, and I don't know why I say that. The older, let me tell you why I say under 30. The young man that started PayPal, but an American company invested 200 million naira 
was under 30, in fact 25. And today it is bigger than six Nigerian bands put together. Those are the guys that have started an initiative that enabled us to pay money. I know that the fintech guys, the gig economy are for the young ones. So I started with under 30. But if you're under 35 and you want to be an entrepreneur, let me see your hand. No, stand up if you're under 35. And I'm going to challenge you this. Okay, okay, please note them. Rapid to us. Please, 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 please note them. I'm a serious, the committee is very serious. Entrepreneurship requires discipline, commitment. And if you falter, they will strike you out. The deal I want to do now is that I'm going to ask the presenters in today from Ukarafun, those are the people we have to mentor, equip. Professor Charles, the second. Charles, those are the people I want for your gap training. Those are the people, please let's take down their names. They are going to be the people we want for the gap training. So that when Ibom A tells us, give us X people from Okada phone with this qualification we can produce for them. So please, if you're standing up, put your name down and you will qualify for the capacity gap training. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, don't go away. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Can we give him a round of applause? Um, please, uh, Barrister Omo, Barrister Omo, please don't be angry with me. Can you just take them to the rear of the hall so that we won't distract the proceedings? Um, but, um, Mr. Chairman, in that time so recent and not so far away, yes. we were sitting in my compound and a young man came and said, he's a singer. I should support him to sing a song. I told him, I've never even heard you sing a song. And we are living in very difficult times. Who are you going to sing for? Everybody has run away from home. Okay, sing a song telling Ukanafo not to fight. And the young man sang the song that has been playing on radio. And the young man, and stand there. And the young man produced the Okanafun, what we have come to call the Okanafun peace song. And I, I challenge anybody to give me a more inspiring song from Okanafun. A more thoughtful, a more reverberating song. It's epic in all its rendition. Mr. Chairman, you start something. Take him. He's a musician. Give him an artist of his choice in Nigeria and mentor him. Appoint one of us to be his manager. And we want to see him fly. Move up. Go to Mr. Chairman. Make a commitment. What is his name, please? Uh, Imo. His real name. What's your real name now? Imo Alexander. Imo Alexander. Yes. Also known as Baba Richie. Baba Richie. Yes. I think that the moderator in saying that knows that within my law firm, I have created a law firm that caters for creative arts. So if you challenge me tonight, you give me a commitment, you will manage this man. I will take him and introduce him to my partner. We will link him up with Sonny in America. That's it. That's the way to go. So, Baba Rich is slim. You become an ambassador of this summit. He's going to mentor you, and every other Okanafun person will see that we weren't here for joke. And that we are blessing a new opportunities Finally, you will remain, sir, as one of the persons I most admire. I one day traveled on Ibum A as they were about to run the announcements. Someone decided to cut it halfway. Uh, any of us who was on that aircraft saw me become a madman. I, it, it's a matter of pride to hear our language spoken on our aircraft. It made sense. And for it to start, uh, who can I Maybe go on again and you cut it. Sir, it took some intervention to hold me down. And uh, one man in that uh, aircraft said, who are you, by the way? 
are you the governor of Akwa Ibom? I said, no. If you want to ask who I am, as I am now, I'm the permanent secretary, minister of culture and tourism. This, is, this negates some aspect of our tourism principle. You, you, you are not allowing us to sell ourselves. Maybe he heard that I was permanent secretary culture. He didn't talk too much again. I refused to let that matter come to you because I took the matter up myself and addressed the anomaly. There will never be any time on Ibom A that nobody will fail to play the song you designed to be played on that aircraft. I have my reasons. So I admire you. And I, I have no doubts for it. And I'll continue to say it. I will not be able to rest until some sons or daughters of a kind of one walk in Ibom A. Not, not, don't dash them. Qualified persons who can come in there and be relevant. Uh, they are willing to Dakada to help them to Dakada. Thank you very much. So one last minute, we'll give you the last minute so that you can wrap up for us to go. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We sincerely appreciate. Next up will be our words, but after he has spoken. Thank you very much. Thank you for this last word. I, I just want to say that the best gift you can give to your generation is to teach them entrepreneurship for good reasons. We know that if you give a man a piece of fish, he will finish for the day uh, and look for something to eat. But if you teach him how to fish, he will never come back to ask you for, for fish. When we look at the scripture, um, I believe the first man on earth was a businessman. And God gave him a ranch, gave him a garden, asked him to work. And um, that shows me that God likes entrepreneurs. Because entrepreneurs, they stand in the gap. They feed God's people. They clothe them. They make life good. They increase the well-being. They improve the well-being. Jesus came, and when he was looking for his disciples, they were businessmen. They were workplace people. Fishermen, custom officers. I think only one was a clergy. I'm sure he would have uh, gone to the church to hold an election for elders and deaconess. But what is that all pointing to? God is glad when we invest. Because like I said, an investor exists not for himself, but for the sake of others. He wants to provide jobs. He wants to provide products and services to the market. Of course, he will make money out of, out of that. But God is pleased. God is pleased with farmers, who are my first uh, good example of entrepreneurs, because they do God's work. And that's why God must bless them. So I thank God for UKADC. God will bless you. You've touched the future today. The story of Okanafun will change. And God will remember you for good in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Before they step off, I'd like to most respectfully invite the chairman of summit to please move the chairman of UK EDC up there for uh, a few plaques of appreciation for our very distinguished uh, discussants and the lead speaker. We are very grateful to you for having to do this. Okay. Uh, take it, take it down. Go up. Take it up, take it up, go ahead. After, uh, wait for the picture. Good. Ah. Present voice. Okay, now the presentations will be made first of all to Imam Abbasi Jacob and then to Professor Paul Woodford, and then to Mr. George Inyangite. Move the next one. The, the first plan will have to be changed. Move the box. All right, to you, Professor Paul, on move behalf up, of move up, so UKEDC.
We recognize and appreciate your job and we present this award to you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate George. I told Mr. George Inyangite, thank you very much for coming. We enjoy and appreciate you. And on behalf of UK EDC, we present this award to you. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I can play it. Yes. What do you want? So yeah, I present an offer.
Jagi me me ba o ni longo ji. Jagi me me ba o ni longo ji. Jagi ma ba ni longo ji. Jagi ma ba ni longo ji. Jagi ma ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana fu ni longo ji le ba ke. Jagi ma ba. Kana fu ni longo ji. Jagi me me ba. Jagi ma ba. Kana fu ni longo ji. Jagi wa wa. To Kanafon people, Kanafon man, 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 she says she's happy to have been the first lady of a choir instead at a time like this and that she's able to contribute her little quota to the development of a tribe of because incidentally, number one, she happens to be the wife of the Kanafon indigenous government. Two, she herself is an extract of the That is what they were called to come and do. And she has said when next you want to choose a governor's wife. And when next you want to choose a wife to governor, make sure you choose a wife to the terrain. And understand the problem of the environment. So that she will be able to add value. Much as the governor and the governor is It is on this note that she has taking it upon herself to add value to the lives of the women by way of remodeling markets, empowering women, building shelters for the indigent ones, giving grants and scholarships to our youths, giving our youth starter packs who have been qualified one way or the other to become entrepreneurs just as it has been said. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And she has no doubt that because we have begun, slow and steadily, we are going to get there. And she has said, I should tell you that you have one of your daughters here, Dr. Charity Ido, who is quite very close to her, that she will send words to the people of Ukana phone. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much indeed. One thing is very sure, that award will get to government house. Well done, madam. The next recipient is Right Honorable Anyekan Etambasi, the speaker of the Seventh Assembly. The Honorable Speaker is here represented, so please step forward and receive the award. From the Chairman of Council. Is that the one? Is that the one? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the good people of Ukanafu, I am privileged to present this award to you as Ubaudemo Kanafu for all the good things you've done for the generality of the people of Ukanafu. Congratulations. 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The next award will go to Senator Dr. Akun Eyareyi. The distinguished senator is here represented. I would like to invite our brother, Honorable Anieka Nakban, to please accept to step forward and present this award to his. Mm -hmm. The government and people of Okanafun bestow on you, distinguished Senator Akun Yareni, as a two fan Okanafun for your immeasurable contributions to the development of Okanafun local government. Today, June 1st, 2021. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. A round of applause for the very distinguished senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Anieka Nakman. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as uh, that award was being presented, a very angry man came to me and said, uh, that he was very happy when he went there to collect the award for the honorable speaker. That he didn't even want to speak. Cool. He just wanted to go to the mic and announce what the speaker said. Did I even know that the speaker said anything? Was that in your mind to know? Come and announce here. Come to the mic. All protocols duly observed. Um, on behalf of the speaker, quite with Mr. House of Assembly, Actually, he had prepared to come here, but a call from a higher authority came, and he couldn't come, so he asked me to represent him. He has asked that I announce a modest donation of 500,000 Naira to the organizers of this event, and still pledge that with the help of his colleague, who is a member representing Okanafun, State House of Assembly, Honorable Charity Do, that whatever will happen with this um, summit, that she will be able to brief him more. So I stand on that um, ground to say thank you and God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Please clap for this man. Oh. Because immediately he did it, the lady says she's no more going. She also wants to announce that she doesn't even want to speak. Madam, please announce. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations, Okanafun people, for the first ever economic summit ever in 31 local governments of Akwebom State. Congratulations. I'm here on behalf of distinguished Senator Akone Yai, who is unavoidably absent. She asked me to be here. She's really part of this program today. And with what I have heard and seen today, I will relate exactly to her, but she sent me to Dr. Charity Ido, the MP Akwaibom State, that she will immediately send words to the committee and members of this event. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you very Please much, madam. Thank you very much. The next award recipient is Barrister Emmanuel Moses Enoidem. Barrister Emmanuel Moses Enoidem is here represented by the Honorable Member representing Etumekpu in the Aquarium State House of Assembly, Honorable Mfon Idong, JP. The award will be presented by Honorable Unime Idem, who is the member representing Okanafun 
another one I'm in the House of Representatives. Our National Legal Advisor, PDP, on behalf of the good people of Okana Funduku Government Area, I have the privilege and honor to present this award to you as a TU fan, Ukanafun. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so very much, the organizers of this summit. Uh, I'm here standing in for Barrister Emmanuel Enoyden. We've seen how the program is going on. It needs a little bit of fun. I will inform my boss accordingly, and that will be done. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate the next award goes to Right Honorable Sir Udo Kiran Akman. If, if, if the Honorable Gentleman is represented, can the representatives please step forward? The next award is to Akbarawa Ifram Inyangayen. Would his representative please step forward? Akbarawa Ifram Inyangayen. I can see my brother, Ndiara Basin, I know them. Moving on to represent or to collect the award on behalf of uh, the Chief of Staff to His Excellency the Governor. May I, with respect, invite Chief Senas Kukbana to please step forward and uh, help us present this award. On behalf of the Nafulaga government and its people, we we'll make this award to Efeminian, Chief of Staff to the Governor. Let me, on behalf of my supervisor, Akparawa Ephraim, Akparawa Iyangayen, appreciate the good people of Kanafun local government, which I happen to be one of them, for this award. He sent words to me yesterday that I should represent him on this and has promised to get back to the committee before the week runs out. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Nana. Um, may I now invite Dr. Glory Edit, easily the longest serving honorable commissioner in this administration, the dean of honorable commissioners. So please step forward. Glory Edit, gender activist and courageous advocate for women and child rights. Your skills as a go-getter are matched by the strength of your convictions. That there is dignity in labor and that rights are worth fighting for. From lecturing and researches to tending to fields and from living out the theory and practice of agricultural economics to the business of propelling government to work, you have posted the image of one who gives strong attention to details and is focused 
in the perfect pursuits of excellence. For that doggedness and resilience, I now invite Obong Eno Akman to step forward and present to you the award of honor from Okanafun people. Uh, to God be the glory. On behalf of the government and people who come from local governments, I, Obang and Ogban, present to you Dr. Glory Edit as a two fan who can have fun. God bless you. Thank you. Okana fun ma. Okana fun ma. Ma ma de o. Because of time, I want to use the member representing Okana fun Oruwanam uh, Federal Constituency to recognize all the men. Uh, let me use uh, the member representing Okara from State uh, Constituency to recognize all the women. And let me especially recognize the overall mother in the states, Her Excellency Mrs. Mata Udomi Mandra, who is here ably represented by the coordinator of our PETS projects. I want to sincerely thank God for today. Honestly, I didn't know I would be able to make it. But because of the love I have for Kanafun, I have to squeeze my time and come here. I really appreciate what Kanafun is doing. I'm someone that really, really appreciates good things. When I came in here, I saw Mr. Anikbeno Mpana. I said, oh, because I used to call him, I'm still calling him Mr. Protocol. Protocol, give it to him. And I'm not in doubt that this uh, program is well organized. And I want to really, really commend all the stakeholders. You have really done well. It's good to appreciate good things. And I know if this is done in all the local government areas, at least our youths will uh, change their attitude better. I want to sincerely thank you for the award you've given to me today. You know, receiving an award is for me to do more. That is my belief. Whenever you are given an award, it's for you to know more. It's, it, to do more is an encouragement. Uh, everybody knows I'm a friend to Canafon, and this award has really confirmed it. The late Udo Ekoyon was a very good friend, a very good brother. Uh, the former commissioner here, former house member, very good friend, very good brother. And so even the one who has given me the award, I call him Paramount Ruler. He's a very good, a very senior friend. And so many people here. And I want to reassure you that this award you have given to me will really encourage me to do more within my capacity to assist Okana Fund people. Uh, in my own discipline, the youths, if there are youths here, both male and males and females that are willing to go into agriculture and they need seeds, they need seedlings, even when they have brown field and need someone to clear for them, they should come to me. I'm going to encourage them. <laughs> provide, by God's grace, a tractor for them. Provide seeds and seedlings when necessary. And of course, there are other things I'll discuss with the committee. But for today, uh, before I go, there's no way I will come without supporting this committee. I know they spent money to do all this. Uh, I'm going to give them when I step down. Permit me not to announce because uh, my boss, the governor, was here before and he had spoken. And I don't need to, I was not even supposed to speak again. So permit me not to announce my donation because of protocol.
Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Glory Edith. We know the cost of tractor, so whether you announce or not, we know that that's a big donation. This one from uh, Dr. Glory Edit. Mrs. Okun will receive the next award on behalf of her husband, Okun E. Okun. Mrs. Okun, please step forward for the award on your dear husband. And that presentation will be made by Mr. Imo Eme, Mr. Imo Eme, Secretary. Okana for an economic development committee. Please step forward and make that presentation to Mrs. Okun. That's okay. No, okay.
here. So they are sent 250,000 Naira to Kanafun to use in celebrating this occasion. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you very much, sir. The last award before the last speaker is an award to the State Accountant General. Can his representative step forward? Representatives of UWM Sunday, Andrew Asien, Accountant General. Okay, step forward. May I invite the chapter chairman of uh, the party in Okanafun to please step forward and present this award to the representative of the accountant general. Ladies and gentlemen, after this presentation, we will take our last paper, which there will be no discussion. And that means it's going to be a very brief paper. And then we will do the home and final awards. On behalf of the people of Okanafun, have the privilege and honor to present to you this award, Ofan Iberu Kanafun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. May I may I now respectfully ask that the following very distinguished persons get ready for their awards. Honorable Unime Idem, Honorable Dr. Charity Ido, Honorable Nyekan Akman, Right Honorable Obong Eno Akman, Mr. Ray Ekbu, Eda Idongasit Udom, Mrs. Uto Ubana, and Emil Young Samuel. And before we do that, Oh, announcements. Announcement. Man. 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 On behalf of the State Accountant General Pastor Wemson the Andresian, we really appreciate the good award that the Okanafun people have bestowed on my boss. And as such, he has asked me to present this token. For the fact that the Our Excellency has already presented our own, I will not want to announce the token that he has given. But he has supported the event. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now invite the co-founder and managing director of Mantra Production Solutions Limited, Mr. Aniekan Willi, to please step forward for the final paper. I, I want to personally thank you, sir. I'm one of those persons who knows that in another hour you are in for an international Zoom meeting. And I know how important that is to you, but you have been here all day for our sake. We will give you the floor for as short a time as possible to present an abridged and summarized version of the paper for us. And then we round up with our words. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Chairman, uh, very distinguished senior citizens and uh, ladies and gentlemen. I understand I have about 20 minutes, and, uh, but I'm truly delighted to have the opportunity to speak on this very important uh, issue um, that security should be seen as an enabler to investment and economic development and sustainability. I had actually prepared like an 18-page presentation <laughs> that I had hoped I'd have the time to go through. 
Um, I'll still pass that on to the committee, no doubt. So what I'll try to do would be to summarize key points in that presentation, and uh, hopefully we can have an interaction thereafter. Um, the very concept of putting together a summit like this at this tier of government, to me, is quite transformational. And I, I believe it speaks to the quality of leadership. It speaks to the quality of human resources that you have in Okanafon to conceptualize something like this, which many people have confirmed is the first of its kind in Akwaibom State at this level. It is my hope that the strategic objectives of this exercise will be realized. And of course, other local government can take a cue from this to be able to enhance governance at the level which is closer to the people. A few years ago, Okanafon was considered a war zone. I believe all of you can relate to that. And um, because of this situation, a lot of people had to leave town. A lot of businesses had to leave Okanafon to other neighboring cities. Fortunately, with the intervention of the current administration, I believe we're beginning to see a return of normalcy in the way things are happening as far as security is concerned. Nevertheless, there's still more that needs to be done for you to be able to attract the level of investment and visitors that you need to help you develop Okanafon to the level that would be what all of us want it to be. Mr. Chairman, I believe that's what gave impetus to the very exercise that you've you and your colleagues have put together, and I want to thank you for this groundbreaking uh, activity that you've put together. It is a timely intervention that I believe will engender confidence and signal a paradigm shift in attracting new investors and encouraging indigents and businesses that left town to return to Canafon. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the chairman and his team deserve a round of applause for this initiative. <laughs> Let's look at security as a core human need. Intrinsically, we all know, at least we sense it, the importance of security in our daily affairs because every day in our life, we are touched by some aspect of it. The centrality of security in human affairs was first highlighted as far back as 1943 by the American psychologist Abraham Maslow in the paper entitled The Theory of Human Motivation. The bottom line of that theory was that before you can aspire to higher activities in life, you need to meet the basic needs, which are safety and security needs. I will not go through all of that. Let me just quickly mention that security is the license to operate. All of the things we've talked about today, the various presentations have been made, without security, you really cannot attract and sustain any of those activities. I believe that's why we're having this discussion today. So what is the nexus between security and investment and sustainability? Before we get to answer that question, let me admit that today in many places and environments, security is really not considered a high priority. You can see the, how they push security to the last paper in this, uh, in this summit. It's just an unconscious reflection of how we treat security in our daily lives. We really don't address security issues until something happens. And why are we talking about security today? It's because of the unfortunate event that occurred here a couple of years ago. That's why that consciousness has come to play. Role or understand the challenges that we have to face now and in the future as we seek to attract more investment into Canafon. Indeed, as we discussed earlier on, 
it is a need that is often taken for granted by many. But fortunately, the current leadership in Okana Fund seems to get it. And I believe, like I said earlier on, that's the reason why we're having this discussion today. Should we look at the place of security investment decision? Please bear with me as I go through this um, short um, readout. The world, as we know, is rapidly changing and becoming even more complex and volatile. And this, no doubt, has a direct impact on the emerging competitive environment that we all are seeking to attract investment. Now, so why is security important to an investor? There are many reasons, but the key amongst them is the safety of their investment funds. No investor will bring in investment funds into an environment that is not sure. He can get his investment funds out, or he can ensure that his workers can work in a, in a safe environment. So where you have a perception of insecurity, you are not going to have investment. Try as you, you try. Any serious investor will most li likely look elsewhere, except maybe somebody like George Akban here, who is from here, who will probably invest just for sentimental reasons. So security is central in everything that we do. And there are numerous examples I can cite. Today we know what's going on in the country, the Hessman issue, the Eastern Security Network and the iPod issue. All of that is creating an environment of insecurity. And these are the issues that investors will look at as they are considering how to pull funds into environment and all of that. Going forward, in order to illustrate the importance of security more, I should mention that most companies have security departments and those that do not have use contract private security organization or consultants like us to help them draw up trade assessment as they go into environment or to assess how they can manage their investment while they're there. So the environment, environmental stress that is brought about by the ongoing global security threat from international criminality, corruption, and extremism across many countries has fuel conflicts within nation states, especially those with weak or stressed economies like Nigeria, that has impacted us here in Akwa Ibom State. And those of you here have actually experienced that much closer than many people. This situation is more prevalent within our border towns and villages. Like I said, you have already experienced a bit of this at the height of the crisis when many businesses and individuals deserted Okanafon. That is why I believe the organizers of these events have looked at security as a key enabler, and you cannot leave it as a, uh, without paying very close attention to it. Let me s just uh, take a few minutes to talk about the changing dynamics in population. By 2050, not far away from now, the world's population is expected to, be, to have grown by 2.5 billion people to nearly 10 billion people on Earth. Half of this growth is expected to come from just nine countries, and Nigeria is one of them. So you can just reflect on that a little bit as we grow to um, 10 billion people, perhaps the country Nigeria will have grown from 200 that we are today to 400 million people. That will have a huge impact on what we are currently dealing with. Already, the country, the security system, apparatus in the country is already stretched. They can't cope. This has enormous implications for a growing economy like a Kwaibom state and by extension, Okanafon to consider how to optimize such growth opportunity in a competitive environment. Across the world, we will see a rapid growth in the number of jobs being automated, 
are new technologies evolving. Economic growth is going to be a challenge. We are going to see a change from traditional market-based economy principles of supply and demand to the world of where technology will drive most of what we do. So, what I think will happen is that our world, our country, and our state is going to be quite different from what we are currently experiencing. Our children and our grandchildren will see something totally different from what we are experiencing. But again, it's not all doom and gloom. Some of the topics that were covered earlier on, I was privileged to listen to the lead speaker earlier on and the subsequent ones, providing new areas or retooling people on how to do things differently and how to escape some of these uh, challenges that we'll face as the explosion, uh, population explosion occurs. And that is why it's ensuring a secure environment is necessary to return investment and accelerate the process of attracting new ones that this summit will bring about. Okay, let's look at the importance of security for Kwaibom investment potentials. Having spent some time discussing the global challenge, we can expect to see and provide some basic examples of how security can be seen as an enabler. In its most basic form, security pre prevents crime, which is a significant, significant threat to any business. An effective security management system can offer mitigation to protect investment, put quite simply, Nobody will keep an item of value in a house without a door. Shareholders, investors, you know, demand better approaches to security more than ever before. In summary, security equals confidence, and that is important to everybody. According to official records, the investment potential of Aquibom was recorded as 66.35 billion in 2017. In 2018, $90.89 billion, but then declined to $29.91 billion in 2019. Down again to $16.74 billion in 2020, and merely $8.41 billion by first quarter of 2021. Clearly, the COVID 19 pandemic has had a huge impact on this. A key investment decision is security. Unfortunately, some global investors have chosen to move their funds to countries outside of Nigeria due to security concerns and the inability to protect their investment by host government. I was just having a chat with Barry a short while ago, and these were some of the things that were agitating in his mind, even though he didn't state them clearly, but it's a huge concern for foreigners that are seeking to bring in investment into an environment like this. I am reminded by the comments by the chairman of Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CBN Abuja branch, Professor Uche Uwaleke, who stated, the chances of investment intentions crystallizing depended a lot on the extent to which the rising insecurity is tackled. Any foreign investor will consider security paramount before making investment decision. That is key. Security and business environment in Okanafon local government area. So what then should we be doing to protect business environment in Okanafon? The local government plays a critical role in societal and economic development. As a third tier of government, it is the closest to the people that can better feel the pulse and engender economic activities that impact the people better. Therefore, the role of the local government in addressing priority areas mapping out programs aimed at poverty reduction and economic empowerment plays a critical part 
in reducing social tensions and enhancing security. Specifically, sir, Mr. Chairman, we need to look at the strategies that you could bring about that will enhance security of the local government and create enabling environment for investment and economic development. Most communal conflicts, as we know, arise due to the failure of responsible government in position at conflict resolution in the affected communities. The local government role in timely de-escalation of disputes at incipient stages has impact in minimizing tensions and creating a peaceful environment. To the extent that this initiative is proactive, proactively done, would impact conflict resolution and create awareness among stakeholders that would help in creating a positive image within the local government. So what then should be the role of the local government specifically? Oftentimes, local government in their bid to boost their internally generated revenue, create em employment uh, opportunity for youths, set up mechanisms to drive collection of revenue. Sometimes they use private revenue collectors, and they don't follow through to see how these guys are actually affecting the collection of this IGR. So sometimes it leads to extortions, leads to road blockades, leads to all kinds of harassment to people who visit these areas. And the end result is that such hostile postures of, or activities inadvertently help to create an unwelcoming environment for visitors or would-be investors and who would be visitors and investors? People come here for marriages, people come here for weddings, people come here for funerals, people who have never been here before. And they form an impression during such visits about an environment. If it's a positive impression, of course, when they are thinking about investment, they will come here. If it's a negative impression, of course, they will look elsewhere when they are making the, uh, decisions regarding investment. In my career as a security professional and an entrepreneur, I have had first-hand experience of how these criminal activities can be frustrating to entrepreneurs, especially the local small-scale businessmen who are struggling to survive in the current harsh economic environment. Investors also look to invest in an environment where there is a perception of effective criminal justice system. Although this is not entirely within the purview of the local government chairman, it is important that we highlight it here as a key consideration because it has the potential of discourage, discouraging potential investors if there is a perception that there, is no, there are no consequences for bad behavior, that crimes are not punished, or legal disputes can take forever to resolve. Unfortunately, much as the local government council or chairman is desirous of tackling insecurity, it needs active collaboration, active collaboration with the government security agencies in its domain to effectively carry out its plans. I do not know, Mr. Chairman, how the level of cooperation you are having from the government security agencies here. But I do know as a chief security officer, this can sometimes be a challenge. Notwithstanding all of this, having an effective security council or community relation committee within your domain and providing timely logistic support to government security agencies could help motivate them to better performance and all of that. I don't think I need to elaborate more on that. DPO, am I saying the same? Saying the right thing? Okay. Security agencies and the maintenance of law and order. Maintenance of law and order is the primary function of government, and the extent this function is carried out by any government is dependent on how effective the security agencies, especially the police, are. In today's Nigeria, we have witnessed the enormous 
challenges our security forces have been confronted with, starting with the issue of underfunding, lack of equipment, understaffing, poor remuneration, corruption, and inadequate training. I can go on and on. And this is coming at the backdrop of increasing crime rates in our society. It is therefore not a surprise that we are hearing more and more calls for state policing by state governors and many other people. So there needs to be a collaboration with local community to bring about a more effective security and response to events and incidents in our local communities. The current practices can be improved upon to the point where a more effective synergy can emerge to bring about confidence building, intelligence gathering, better policing and conflict resolutions. Our traditional rulers or institutions also have a role to play. They are the custodians of our customs and tradition, which underpin our moral value system. Lately, in some localities, the process leading to the selection of traditional rulers have been compromised, leading to emergence of persons of questionable credentials emerging as candidates for such exalted positions. This development, I dare say, has gradually diminished the high regard normally reserved for the traditional institution and its occupants, and invariably, the ability to command that high moral standing needed to maintain discipline in their domain. The local government, I believe, should synergize with the traditional institution to bring about a system that ensures that only credible and morally sound individuals emerge to occupy such positions. Where there are disagreements or conflicts, immediate steps should be taken to address the root cause of the issue before it escalates. You cannot leave it to resolve itself. If you do that, the result will be this endless crisis that we've had to deal with over time. What about the youth organizations? There is a popular slogan, build the youth, build the nation. The role of youth as vanguard for security of any community cannot be overemphasized in this regard. Youth groups that are left uncoordinated and unchecked to perpetuate extortion, vandalism, and other forms of criminal activities will ultimately neg have negative Im impression about the, will lead to people having negative impression about such community and become a fatal recruitment soil or heaven for criminal groups. I was happy to hear the MC speak uh, mention the fact that a couple of days ago the youth had volunteered to take up the role of policing for the environment. That's a positive step in the right direction. It's now up to the um, local government to synergize with the government security and just to ensure that we have a more structured, you know, um, structure in place to ensure that it doesn't deviate from the stated purpose of what they're trying to do. And conversely, when properly organized and coordinated, the youth can play critical roles in enhancing security through intelligence gathering, visible deterrence, crime detection, delay and response support as individuals and through their various youth networks. Therefore, the active involvement and collaboration of the youths with government authorities and traditional institutions will not only improve the overall security architecture of the given environment, but also project a strong and positive image for that community. Of course, we can talk about uh, cultism, we can talk about market association and their impact in all of this in helping to create a positive image for the community. But I would like to conclude by saying that clearly security is a key enabler for any successful investment. For without effective security to mitigate existing and perceived threats, investment is going to be exceedingly difficult to attract and more importantly, unlikely to succeed. Also, without effective security, 
businesses already cited in an area are unlikely to succeed and might eventually relocate to other more secure areas. You have already experienced this in the past. As recently as May 18, 2021, the CEO of Shell, Ben Van Borden, told investors at their annual general meeting that their company's onshore oil portfolio in Nigeria was no longer compatible with its strategic ambition. He stated, unfortunately, our remaining onshore operation continue to be subject of sabotage and theft. It means that the balance of risk and rewards associated with our onshore oil portfolio in Nigeria is no longer compatible with our strategic ambitions." Unquote. This, ladies and gentlemen, further underscores the importance of securities to investors. We have discussed key elements for creating this enabling security environment and how it revolves around recognizing and consciously taking proactive steps by the local government administration, by leading from the front and setting exemplary pace for the rest of the citizenry to follow. This comes by way of pragmatic vision and priority setting, good and responsible governance and synergy with key stakeholders that encompasses effective criminal justice system. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all about leadership. When this is in place and all citizens pull in one direction, it will become apparent within a very short period of time that to potential investors and visitors that Okanafon is indeed an investment destination where government and community leaders and its citizens are consciously and collaboratively involved in positively taking ownership and being part of the drive to engender successful and sustainable economic development. The importance of investment in any community cannot be overemphasized. Apart from providing direct employment, there are other spin-offs and the general business environment will be bolstered and this in turn will lead to poverty alleviation. Insecurity drives investors away, which leads to unemployment and exacerbation of poverty. It is only a secure environment that will engender continued investment that will lead to continuous improvement in the condition of living of indigents of Okanafon and ultimately culminate in sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for your attention. I rest my case here. Thank you. Uh, don't leave just yet, sir. Don't leave just yet. I, I know your paper was not to be discussed. It will be discussed in our hearts. Uh, please sit. May I most respectfully invite the chairman of summit, planning to invite the chairman of UKEDC to help. Uh, because of the importance of this paper too, to present this uh, a word of appreciation to our speaker. After the group photograph. Thank you very much indeed. And now for the presentation. On behalf of UKEDC and also Kanafun local government, I present this award to Mr. Anirkan Willy for excellent support to Kanafun people. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much indeed.
Thank you. We highly appreciate. Do you want me to sit? No. No, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. We, we needed for you to have a change mindset that uh, we do not relegate security to the background, at least. We also give preferential treatment to security. Can we encourage him with a, a big round of applause? It's not easy all day, all morning, all afternoon, all evening to sit through. We appreciate, sir. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gradually winding down beautifully. And it is time again to take on the last segment of our awards. And after this will now be the closing ceremonies of this award, which is just a two-item affair. There will be a summit wrap-up by our rapporteur, so she'll be working now. And uh, after the uh, wrap-up, um, the summit chairman will give us next steps. What are we going to do after this? Is it good night or see you later? And then after that, there will be a word of thanks by Elder Imo Eme, who is the secretary of UKEDC. Then the summit will be declared closed by our chairman, Elder Dr. Edongasit Udum. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a big moment. To me, one of the biggest moments of this uh, 45th anniversary of Okanafun. Uh, Okanafun has chosen to recognize and celebrate some of its best and brightest and uh, also celebrate our friends from across uh, the vast expanse of this uh, country. What would be sweeter than having to celebrate your own? So it behoves us therefore to look at this moment as a very worthwhile one. Um, to set the tone for the awards ceremony, uh, uh, Honorable Madam Charity, you will help me sort out the awards to be sure that everything is in order. Where is Baba Richie Slim? Udokirian. Where's the award? Oh, my, my sincere apologies. I, I've just been told that uh, Honorable Charity Ido will be receiving the award for Udokirian. Um, Mr. Chairman, can you do us this favor? Of, uh, please, thank you very much, sir. I don't know how much I'll pay for the stress. Thank you, sir. That's reassuring. Kindly help us. Uh, uh, Richie Slim, I'm going to give the microphone to thrill the audience with the Okana phone uh, theme song. Do you, have it in, do you have it in your phone? Uh, give him. I don't like the quality of that's coming out there. Give, give your own. I have mine, but give your own. On behalf of the people and the government of Okana phone local government, I hereby present this award to Right Honorable Udo Kirian Akpan uh, for being open Okanafu. Thank Madam you very Congress much, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time to celebrate our own is coming. And uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, as we get set to do this, uh, I hope uh, Madam Charity, uh, Honorable Madam, uh, yeah, let, let's ensure that all the awards are in order and in place. Risen Voice and Company, are we ready for Baba Richie Slim? Give him a very good microphone. Let him come and dance before his fathers. And after that, we celebrate the great sons and daughters of Okanafun. Let me also inform uh, all of us present here that there are three posthumous awards. Uh, the labels of our heroes past shall never be in vain. Okanafun will never forget our trailblazers and the people who have nurtured us. So tonight, the three awards going out will be to the late Udo Ekbenyong, the late Walter Edem, 
and the late Asuko Pana, themselves trailblazers and founders, leaders and facilitators of what we now enjoy as Okanafun local government area. Before we get there, Baba Richie Slim. Okay. Okay, I remember. A few more words. See back who can phone. He would young when I want to go to a good tool. Can I phone you long or Jereba? I came. Who can I phone you long or Jagime? Who can I phone you long or Jagima Banjano? Who can I phone you long or Jereba? I came. Who can I phone you long or Jagime? Who can I phone you long or Jagima Banjano? A fukuma baniko a fotan, bon ibe ne baniko nsin ke utan, si anke ne bon se kwe bon a tell you ke do ke fango. A yen if yo ke, e kaite meke, kakbon inam po se fumu ke meke. Yagi komo basi ke di me bon ogo ide i kan atao. Owo, ti e ti odada, ku nye ne mfana, ini iso jiripa, akwa basi kara, yagi je me mem, yagi je mi ma. Go to Nino because Masu Otuayero, Papa Su Otuayero, Nito Ketua Tua, Yare Meme Bao, Yare Meme Bao, Yare Ma Bao, Yare Meme Bao, Yare Ma Bao, Kukana Fono Jiro, 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 who can have for Nilong or Jagima Banjano? Ijemima, Jagima Ba. Who can have for Nilong or Jireba came? Who can have for Nilong or Jagamemeba? Who can have for Nilong or Jagima Banjano? A Turugo or the shooting and killing in Ogope. I swear, even fighting and bribing no be the way. Why are you killing ourselves every day? Iyo, Iyo, Jagima Ba. One love my brother, show love my sister. Let's come together and shine our light huh? and forget about the story of the past. Make you know what's in the matter. Oh, let's wine one and kanga, mbara dan tembara da. Ini so jiri kbara, ofru sen idara. Ava si so songo, si amana mungwa na foya ma o. Happy year and happy faces is the look we want to see on the people's faces. For the people of Ukanafu and other places, so na so yagi maba kilong oji Ukanafu nilong oji reba akeme Ukanafu nilong oji yagi maba Ukanafu nilong oji yagi maba njeno turu go go turu one and one Ukanafu nilong oji reba akeme Ukanafu nilong oji yagi maba. O kana foni long oji yagi ma banjeno teneka nto o yagi bono kima yagi bono kima o yagi bono kima yagi bono kima afri ma ogo nto o fangwe yagi bono kima teneka o politicians atrego yagi meme ba o youth yagi bono kima nem para waji o Neng pono gojiro, nko ipa jiro. Ah, yagi bono kim. Neng para wajiro, neng tono gojiro. Eturu gogo. Kamba kilo mo yagi bono kima, yagi bono kima o. Yagi wa wani dia o. Eturu gogo. Who can have for the Jiro? Who can have for Nilong or Jireba came? Who can have for Nilong or Jagimaba? Who can have for Nilong or Jagima Banjano? Everybody sing! Who can have for Nilong or Jireba came? Who can have for Nilong or Jagimaba? Who can have for Nilong or Jagima Banjano? Rich is Slimmer, who is Jagima Bao? Bawa, Nilong man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come here, Moke. Ida Rujisli, where you quite quite the kuni giraki memku form. Okay, come here, Moke. Now, in the town, the kufari, big big, 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 big,
Aye de ke da de ko to iko re ma o po mo wo do obere O ene ke kesi Ya e baba Ya o ba wa nyena ba si And we're very proud of the young man and I want to thank uh, Elder Barrister Anyekan Upana for undertaking to assist us in mentoring our brother to the highest of opportunities he can get. I will offer my little humble self to act as his manager, if you don't mind, to ensure that he utilizes the best of what we are doing for him. Our, our brother has made available a space in his chambers where he nurtures people with creative talents. So tonight he has added our own brother to the list and we want to make sure that it's a result-oriented process. Again, I thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for your wonderful example. Well, can I have a thank you now? We appreciate, sir. Thank you. Young man! We can have a Young man, we are going to, at this point, celebrate our wonderful brothers and sisters, our fathers, our grandparents, both living and deceased, who have in some way impacted or made us proud as Okanafun people. In your impossible with that, I wait it. They go my inam was in my phone, yet to all you give them, and yet to the button, I bet I bet to do 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 if you know our am going to go see them, eh? I'm going to go see them. I will 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 see them. I will go 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 see them. I I and to the camera, when they go on, couldn't win. And long name there, and couldn't film my kid, John, or their man. I mean, Tangy come back, memo. See, keep it coming. I'm a man, one by one. Memo, and I tiny come film. My man, no microphone, my tiny call, you mean your boy, your boy, your boy, your boy, your boy. I'm a man, I didn't get a good patron where you know, Kennedy has so called no bars and dago. Young man. I will understand. Get on get anyway down in your Our awards for this very special anniversary day will go to the following sons and daughters of Kanafun. Uncle Dagan I will see where I can wear them and moon could any more honorable Unime Idem. Sana, no, no, you don't own a couple in a cup. Hey, no, 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 Honorable Doctor Charity, Ido. What it
Ayo. Ah. Ah. Yaso. Iyo. The next uh, recipient is we good at the honorable Anyekan Akman. Hey! I don't go win and all near the river young good at the right honorable Abong and our ace up man. Yeah, you go no kima. Hey, I give her no kima. Yeah, you go no kima. Ya <laughs> I don't know when I do we could it am here the Mr. Ray Ebu. You can have for you. Hey! Hey! Yagi Mama! Yagi Mama! Yagi Mama! Yagi Mama! Yagi Mama! Yagi I when I could I elder Udom. That's all I want. I want to 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 I want uh, the next recipient is Emedion Unse Samuel. Emedion Unse Samuel. You can have for you, 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 you can have Ya que me meba, ya que me meba, ya que me meba, oh. I swear if you fight in a brave, no be the way. But I will kill it ourselves every day. Yo, yo, ya que me meba. One love my brother, two love my sister. Let's come together and shine our light huh? And forget about the story of the past. Make you know what's in the matter, oh. Ah. The swan and Kanga, brother and ten brother, in his so jiripa, who fools a needara. I was his song, oh, Samana Mumana for Yamao. Happy are and happy faces is the look we want to see on the people's faces. For the people of Ukanafu and other places, so Naso Yagimaba, Kilongo Jidu Kanafuni Yagimaba Yagimaba. And I could. Pastor Godwin Inyeng, 
the chairman of Ghana Food, to step forward for his award. Paniko Afotang, Bongi Bene Paniko, Sinke Utak, Sianke, Neko, Seko, I tell you, Keda, Kefago, Ayeni Fiake, Ekaite, make it, Kakongi Nam Pose, Fumu, Kemeke, Yaki, come on, Vasiki, Mamma, go in a Gata, oh, Tieti, or Dad, who Yen and Fan, in the East of Jiba, Akua, Vaseka, Yaki Yemim, Yaki Yemima, go to Nino. Because Masu o tuayere, Papasu o tuayere, Ndito ke tu o tuo, Yage me me ba ho, Yage me me ba ho, Yage me ba ho. Thank you very much. Mbogo, Pede me kuna iso i cha cha, I dreji e nogu nengedo. This is a very special, Ena e de me ngwe kiri dam. Ibo ne na mami e free mom, Mbogo se me mo e de, I will ask the chairman of summit to step forward to that microphone and make a comment. On behalf of the government and people of Okada Fun, I have the singular honor and pleasure to present this award to somebody I consider as my own brother. A clear example of an entrepreneur who has understood the business ecosystem, but now represents us in the business of making laws policies for Nigeria. This award is presented to Honorable Unyeme Idem. You know, can I phone? Thank you, sir. This award presented by the government and people of Bukana Fund and I have the great pleasure because I will present this one. This one I think that if you were to con ask and examine the dance step, his was unique. And it shows a man that has been around in politics for a long time. Because without white handkerchief, he was steering the entire all. But uh, sadly, we are not in a rally. But he knows we can bring a political rally to a business function. Yes, sir. So on behalf of the government and people of Kanafun, I have the most singular honor to present this award to Right Honorable Abol Eno Akpan as Adawusun Okarafo. This award, I have the greatest honor to present to somebody that I am proud is from Mukarafun. The entire world knows him as a journalist par excellence. A man who I have the pleasure of associating with in my days when I was still a student in the UK. But when you go to the United States of America, you go to Europe, and you mention him by recognition, it is known. Not many people in Ukarafon have that self recognition. And I call him my own uncle. So, on behalf of the government and people of Ukarafon, 
So I have this singular honor to present to my own chairman, chairman of UKEDC. On behalf of the government and people of Burkina I present this to the Udon. As a round of applause. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is wonderful. Iyayake. Uh, uh, Mesu <laughs> Who can have fun, ma? Ma? Who can have fun, 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 ma? Who for bringing the people of Burkina Faso together in this manner. This is something to remember. <laughs> Next year, when we gather again for, for the sixth um, anniversary, it will become something to remember. For me as a person, I will say that it is a privilege and honor to be selected and today honored as Idoronyen Burkina Faso. Title in order. So from now henceforth, I'm going to be empowering the youth of Okanafun as Idoronyen Okanafun. This award will be a source of motivation for me to continue to attract federal government projects to this local government. This is one award that will continue to encourage me to be a blessing. Not just for Kanafu, not just for Rwanda, not just for Akwai, but for Nigeria at large. And the glory will return to Kanafu that gave me the mandate. To God be the glory. I have I've already supported um, the committee. And I promise you, um, more support is on the way. Thank you very much. Kanafu, ma! Kanafu, ma! Please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. Today, I want to say thank you to the government and the people of Okanafu for finding me fit to be given this award. Just as the name, Idoronyen Okanafu. I believe by the grace of God, Eme Idoronyen Kemi, true God, Mwenjang Neruo. I want to say that, by the grace of God, I will do my best to make sure that name, I will make sure that the name given to me today, coming to add to charity that is my name, I'm going to make the people of Okan from proud. I have supported the committee, just like the House of Rep members said, We've, we have supported the committee before now. And by the grace of God, we will do more in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Sadi, I'm a musician. 
2008 Anneke a from mo PDP si lo won form e wo ja mi mo on their behalf ki rai support the incoming chairman and you been 500,000 here na no committee na ka na o to da wa se yo o ka fun ke nyin jesus christ O kana fun ma O kana the chairman of Okana fun local government O the chairman and members of the planning committee of this function O kuro di ba no kuro ide Yoruba o nyine Jesus Christ O po ke ke na nyong film I did that. Okay. Other local government, if we pay, we do. Can I fool? That is quite symbolic. Maybe your uh, my next celebration. Can you integrate the political class? That you move. I can next time. Give you a market. Who can I You recognize again because you recognize what the late farmer who are doing the work and the Tayo Karafu. A more than a boy bread who can have food and others in the political class, in good political, in good you. So you were very good at that also who can have food. But accept with all humility. I will not misuse it. I'll use it to facilitate peace in this local government. So that we can achieve the anticipated growth this committee in Visage care. The youth should capitalize on what is going on. So that they can be reviewed. See what has happened to the musician today. Musician to be connected to a musician in America. They come back home. Let's come back home. Ipong fa, Ipong wan, Ipong ikang. Eta ogiru majiren. Ade ko ko. Ikon mo de. Ajo mo de. A kwenye good idea. What the committee says. Bendi. Kiya develop. They all born here, Jesus Christ. Every come back, go say that we I will support the committee with the sum of two hundred thousand naira. Thank you very much. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, when Doctor Charity Do called me and said um, I'm going to be given an award, and the title of the award is Utwani Kangu Kanafun. I ask her uh, what sort of utwani can it is, whether it's nepa or candlelight. <laughs> I think she was taken aback because she didn't know. I, I, I didn't want to be nepa and I don't want to be candlelight. But she said, uh, well, you have to accept it because this one is from your people. Yeah. And that got me. 
that's why I'm happy. I want to thank all of you who contributed to my being um, appointed or given this award. I, I don't know what you considered, but whatever you considered that brought me to this podium, I thank you and I said I will continue in that light. I know that, I know that they always say that to whom much is given, much is also expected. I am sure that given all of us much, they will also expect much from us. I'm sure by God's grace, we will give you as much as we can. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Yakuba Oye Jesus! Yakuba Oye Jesus! I am very happy to be alive today to receive this award. All the people from Okanafun local government that were employed in Mobile up to 2014 were employed by IDU. Whether you came from Ikori, come from Ikori Yabia, Ikoruna, Utafa, Utokun, anywhere in Okanafun, IDU employed them. And in Shaw Foundation Polytechnic and 25 employees, most of them from Okanafun. I also awarded over 95 scholarships to Okwaibum Indigenes. Out of that, more than 55 came from Okanafun. Last Sunday at Afabo, at ICN, I awarded a four year scholarship. And today, I want to tell the council that he is going to give me another two indigenous of Bukanapun who wants to train in engineering, electrical engineering. God bless Bukanapun. And I want to thank my brother, the moderator. Because when you're dealing with UFO, you deal with UFO. Before you, let me say this. Today's and the modern economic summit that others will copy from is repositioning of Canada for sustainable development. Moderator, sir. of a vision and i hope that your visioning will be prepared to actualize the dreams that you saw in your vision you cannot accept your award sir let me make you sign an already established protocol. I was not expecting to get more of Baburum Firem. I'm more so because it's your kite. I must confess that. Get me to humble. By what I have seen in this hall today. Yes, it is true. Like our very big brother has said, came in Keda Bandawa, came in Kebun Kukurum. But honestly, Nkikere Kemoke, I have so big a young 
name of Yahweh, Savior, who can for Jesus' name. And for me, I'll continue to think of Okanafun before I think of myself. I have said already that by the time I finish from this council, whether you believe it or not, Okanafun will become a 21st century community. And I stand by that. I mean, my role, even on the day of my inauguration, that by the time I leave, maybe a few years after that, okay? Ibum A we see you can have the best pilots. And they, we have said that today here. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. We shall produce the best professionals in this state, in this part of the country, from this place. But I want to appreciate UK EDC because they have not disappointed me. From the chairman, the secretary. Our very big brother, the very erudite international lawyer, Barry Sanyeka Nukbana. Our very big brother, Mr. Sanyeka Nukbana, Barry Saido Omo, and all of you in that committee. I am proud that you come from Kanafu. I will not let you down as the chairman of this local government. No, I can follow I see. And many of you by the time we gather here next year, we shall be commissioning and gathering in the new council hall, Obon Kudoyong Unity Hall. It's also irritating. And let me assure you once again that the mandate you gave me is not misplaced. And I will not abuse that mandate. It is a mandate that I will hold to the glory of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also, in conclusion, I most humbly accept the award, the virtual award conferred on me today by UK EDC and station, the very good, peace loving people of Ukarafu. Incidentally, Ukarafu is there by Iron Fara, Iron Men, Iron Yen, Iron Tiego, Yavazarian from Burukafu in Jesus' name. We are going to invite three families for the post-mod presentation. The families will have to nominate, we will have to represent them. The persons or who have given this award have decided to honor the late Obong Asukwo Ukbana and also the late Obon Walter Idem, and also the late Obon Udoi Benyong as facilitators, trailblazers, and uh, progenitors of the very concept of Kanafun as an entity. And uh, it behoves us, therefore, to recognize their worth and their rules in this amazing arrangement that produced our local government area. Now, the representatives of these families, this is actually a very solemn moment. I don't know if you want to talk to them, but if you want to talk to them, I want to talk to them. 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 Because in year Segu, in year Kebodo Kenten, Akuinam, Kerimbu, Rokayo, Demano, Idus, and Kenonyan Kenten, arrangement that was in place before we were born, from time immemorial. Ken Tufun, Ken Topon Topom, was a member of Kenam, no Kafun, Bongwana, a great Kuru song, a Yen Sere. Every month, why them? Every month, Tavida. Every month, she was a member of the board. Umia, Mr. Tap, Mr. Kisu, Ekebe. Okay, so we now are so we are Nam. You know, you don't remember. Ma, Iki Nama. Ma, representing the family of Udo Ekbenyo. Please, Kaka Keda Ken Kemiba. Oh, Mercure a Kaji Abong one, Anna Upana 
Ojo, Ojo, Mombone, Kaikbong, a head teaching there. Maybe from Mombono can have two, three. Thank you very much. Please hold on. Uh, chairman of Summit Planning, uh, the microphone is yours now to uh, please invite our senior citizens and elder statement to make the present posthumous presentation on behalf of our very distinguished uh, forebears, forebearers and progenitors. I have the pleasure of inviting Right Honorable Anir Karapan to please come. <clears throat> please, you will let me present this award, which is presented by the government and people of Okanafun, to the late Honorable Obong Udo Ekwenyong. It is in this a posthumous award as Umana Okanafun. Thank you very much. God bless you. Sorry. Thank you, you very much. Seat. Congratulations. May I invite Right Honorable Obong and Opan to please come. So you let me present this award, the Postumos Award, given by the government and people of Okanafun, to let Obong Barista Sukwo John Upana, which has been given to him posthumously. As a Siak Usumu Kanafun, please. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me present this award that has been given by the government and people of Okanafun to the late Atabong Walter Idem, posthumously as Ata Iberedem Okanafun. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, over to you. Thank you very much. Maybe I'm afraid we died down. We get it. Uh, before memories are young, no, but the but the are okay. Them manage, okay. Them for the next one minute, we'll observe some silence in the honor of our great heroes, progenitors, pathfinders, and facilitators of the Okanafun project. Let us observe a minute silence in their honor, please. Me being a wasi, wasi ntisi na afri mumbo. 
nogu kemi chiongu chit iwentum ja abaka nemenge nam nu pong bun tesa yenge de abong wo taidem abong suko pa abong re kwenyong abon wo ru kemem amen thank you very much thank you thank you for coming we celebrate you nge we come the national association of ukanafu students worldwide mogu form waitiaba greatest nigerian students a kai ke print exercise book e dey make me fun e we come we dey greatest we thank you for the wonderful gifts of free exercise books mun tum ntoy no je me ni si yo mbo ku fun we bi me mo ke holy family bu ke ti an institute bu ke regina chele dai ke si jojo ibo no de ibon ki song be de ni great nigerian student bro ka fun isi ka ni bro de ki nte fun fun gbe ni ka bi mom ni n tum great o gara bo student ibaba any good second o wa mon tum no good second me no e ka fun gbe ki ka ni bro de da no je ke se nam tin e gwa me mo bo mi me to be be me 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 eh 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 me to me 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 vito eh eh frai de basi de yon on pon tum ta mo ke je je si ka na go abi si ka na jire la o ga wa jire basi i'm very proud of you students this is wonderful eh ja wa si yon ni na eh aku ni da ga de na aku rapa chos bonzi gwere fun pa se nam u form fin mu ya mo e pick up the microphone you know a summary of fejiri kup se me mo no kum te wo ke etan ina o jirem film give us a, a, a concise summary of today's deliberations and after that chairman of summit let us know the next steps and after that uh afona could the chairman to come and close the summit Agirinyo, a reason voice. MS we could close some already, ma. For we the national anthem, ma we the national anthem, ma. Pastor Godwin Inyeng, other chairman who can have another rain, ma. Pastor Mori, abong akam, akong close mbomi in Agire. Yes sir, yes sir, goodbye sir, yes sir. And after that, would have been good to go. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uko, come and take my. I can go ahead, sir. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have come to a very critical stage regarding this event. My duty here is to highlight some key points that were made and then resolutions for implementation. Therefore, I will try as much as possible to be brief and straight to the point. You will agree with me that uh, it is not easy to come on here and perhaps represent three papers that were presented in three hours and then represent them in five or six minutes. But I will do my best to do justice. Uh, in the course of this event, uh, three papers were presented. The first and the lead paper was 
was on education and capacity for Ghana Fund sustainable development. The second paper was on entrepreneurship as the catalyst for Ukana Fund sustainable development, while the final paper was security and enabler for investment and sustainable development. The first presenter, the lead presenter, started by defining education. He quoted with approval Sir Malcolm X on education, and he defined education as a path for success, a path for growth, the path for development. He went for that to ask a few questions. The first question was, why education for Okanafun sustainable development? How can we do it? He answered these questions by looking at the relevance, the right on data for education. And he said, education, when well deployed, repositions a people for self-fulfillment, for greater value, and for peaceful coexistence. He cited countries about 10 countries that have found education and that have put education in the right place. Such countries include, although not limited to, France, Japan, Switzerland, Sweden, Canada, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. He therefore looked at it from the perspective of impact of education on the GDP, that's the gross domestic product, the living standard per capita income, of citizens of those countries. And then he now asked, why do we need education as a, tool, as a tool for sustainable development? He reckoned that in the present regime, in our present life, life has gone beyond what it used to be. Employment, work has taken a new dimension. Work has been reshaped by certain factors that could be likened to, they could be taken as act of God such that work in relation to going to an office is no longer work in that sense because you can work from anywhere. He therefore observed that we need to train our people to be able to cope with competition in the global place because the global environment of today is different from what it used to be even some two years ago. And then he cited the impact of COVID-19 disaster on the economy and of course the work environment. He also asked the, uh, the further question and said how do we do it? How do we deploy education as a catalyst for sustainable development in Okanafu? He answered the question by going further to say that we need to train our people regarding skills. We need to train our people regarding knowledge. We need to train our people regarding mindset. We need to train our people regarding emotional intelligence to be able to adapt to the changes of the 21st century. The reason being that in this era, you no longer would need, you need to retool, you need to unlearn, you need to learn more to be able to cope with the competition that will come. Then he rounded up his paper by advocating for solution or a kind of resolution, the way forward, what do we do going forward? Of course, he mentioned that we need, you need to set up a committee to drive education in Ukarafone. This committee would recognize potentials and then train people to fit into those, um, into those opportunities, into those openings. He mentioned the aviation sector, he mentioned the maritime sector with specific reference to the bomb deep sea port. And then he concluded by saying that if we train our people, if we react proactively and train our people to take advantage of the emerging uh, market, of the emerging sectors in our state, our people will be able to live well. Our people will have what to do. Our people will live well and then exist with others peacefully because somebody who has what to do will be happy. The second paper was on entrepreneurship as a tool for sustainable development. He looked at it from the perspective of what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs looked at, uh, they don't look at challenges, they look at opportunities. And then he highlighted the opportunities in Akwai Boom and in particular reference to Ukanafun, how Ukanafun people can take advantage of those opportunities. He also looked at the four quadrants, the quadrant relating to, 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 to owning a business model that will be sustained. He concluded, just like the first presenter, that we need to set up a committee and that they also volunteered to be part and parcel of those committees. Then, of course, the, 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 the last person presented on security. Security, as a concept, security is a license to operate. 
Then he highlighted areas that we can address uh, as um, quality of people, integrity of people to man security areas in our community. I think, ladies and gentlemen, we will do a detailed work and then submit it to the appropriate authority in due time. Thank you very much. The same way, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing it to a close. May I ask everyone to be seated, please? Can we all be seated? I would like us to maintain the professionalism we started to the end so that this summit would truly be one that other local government can copy from professionalism, from discipline, and from the action. Thank you. God bless you. I'm just here to give the next, next steps. Then uh, the secretary will give a vote of thanks. But in giving my next steps, it will be remiss of me as the chairman of the Summit Planning and Execution Committee not to say a thank you to my fabulous and excellent presenters. They've done extremely well. Each of those presenters were contacted in less than two and a half weeks. One of them flew in from Singapore just to be with us. And it shows that in Ukana Phone we are truly blessed. So I thank all the lead presenters, Mr. Dorian Isaac, Pastor Imor Basit Jacob, and Mr. Anek and Willie. I also thank the panel discussants, Dr. E.T. Abraham, Mr. Barry, Marshall, Dr. George Akpan, Professor Paul Udofort, and the last, certainly but not the least, Mr. George Iyangete II. I'm not going to do a vote of thanks, but let me single some people out to show to Kadafon that when we say we want to train on capacity and you have what it takes, you will reach the pinnacle or the height of your career. I want to single out the chairman of the Publicity and Protocol Subcommittee, my very own brother, Mr. Nekbano Mbana. If you are following the comments from those watching in America in particular, because they have the most comments, the most commentary on the online page, and those followed by those in Europe before we come to Nigeria. The question they have asked is where did we rent your all? But let me say to the entire world that we are coming to you live from the council hall in Okanafun. And this is truly Okanafun. This transformation was made possible by none other than my own dear brother and his team, Mr. Anyekeno Mpanang. And I thank him for his sacrifice. I want to thank my brother Indiana Basi Udum because they anchored protocol. Why am I single them out? I left this place last night, but they were here working till 5.30 a.m. to get what we have now. That's why I said, may God bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Let me thank my chairman, Elder Domasudem Asudem. For his age, he works like a young man. The man is simply indefatigable. God will give you the strength and God will bless you. The chairman of the local government have thanked you before, but I will thank you again for giving the opportunity. Now, in Apotuas, your work begins now. It is your work that takes me to the next steps. What is the next steps? All that we have listened to, all that we have discussed, the entire conversation will be reduced into a comprehensive report for this summit. The recommendations will be part of the comprehensive report. That report, after being vetted by the UK EDC, Chairman, so you will give us a date. For the sake of history and posterity, we will present that report to the Council. 
whatever you would do with that report and its recommendations is for what history and posterity will judge you by. But I believe that you will take serious consideration of that. Those, that is the way the economic summit would end, with the presentation of a comprehensive report. Thank you very much for attending. God bless you. Even as I call Elder Imo Eme to please quickly give us a vote of thanks, and then my chairman will give, close the summit to an end, and the chairman of the local government will pray for us to depart. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great privilege for me to be afforded this opportunity to say a word of thanks to you, our very eminent personalities, having come full circle in this first ever Okanafun Economic Development Summit. On behalf of the UKDC and the Okanafu Local Government Council, I must say we are grateful and feel highly honored by your sacrifices of time, efforts, and material resources. in gracing this summit. So our resource persons, we can't thank you enough. We say, God bless you. To the chairman and members of the UKDC, God bless you for your unrelenting efforts in supporting the local government council and the numerous sleepless nights in the process of packaging these events. Not forgetting your financial commitments from your personal coffers. May God replenish your stock a thousandfold. To the executive chairman, vice chairman, the secretary, all councillors, and the entire staff of Okanafon local government, we say thank you very much for giving us in the UK this is the opportunity to partner with you in charting a growth path for Kanafu. May God bless you. <laughs> to the entire indigenous of Kanafu local government, both at home and in the diaspora. We say thank you very much for your sense of oneness and unity. May God bless you in Jesus' name. To all our security operatives, the support staff, the cameramen, men on the console, the drivers, the PAs, the cleaners, all our people, all the support staff at the Secretariat of the UKADC. We say thank you very much. You are all part of the success story. May God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please permit me to maintain the existing or established protocol. And I have just a one page document to read because this is closing a summit. Uh, today, June 1st, 2021, will be remembered as a great day in the lifetimes and history of Okanafun local government area. It is not a day of political campaign but a day 
to chart a new course for our people. It is a day that the eminent citizens of our land have sacrificed their energy, time, love, and money to bring us together to forge a new direction of repositioning Okarapun LGA for sustainable development and growth. Today's summit can be also addressed as education summit, as capacity development summit, as entrepreneurship summit, and as security summit. The summit will not have any useful meaning if at the end Okarapun Economic Development Committee, UKEDC, which I represent, and Okarapun Local Government Council will not seek to follow up and develop short, medium, and long-term goals and action plans for implementation of each of the summit's recommendations. Permit me to assure you that after the summit, Okarapun Economic Development Committee and Okarapun Local Government Council will come together in or to review all the summit's recommendations and to do a follow-up set of goals and action plans for the development of Okanafun LGA and to develop the indigenes who have registered and attended this summit. To do any meaningful educational capacity and entrepreneurial development, adequate funding will have to be sourced for and collaborations will have to be made with the local government council, Okarapun indigenous in diaspora and in Nigeria, organized private sector, multilateral and donor agencies, state and federal governments. A lot of sacrificial work will have to be done by all in order to reposition Okarapun for sustainable development. The paramount ruler, the clan heads, the village heads, all Ukarapun indigents in all villages will have to join hands together with the security agencies and chairman of council or chairman of council to address the issues of insecurity in Ukarapun LGA if we want development, progress, and peace in our land there can't be any meaningful investment and development in a land that has no peace and security. Finally, the eminent citizens of Ukarapun local government area and our sons and daughters in diaspora and in Nigeria are ready to take Ukarapun to a higher level of sustainable development if you allow us. But for us to succeed, the chairman of Bukarapun Local Government Council and all the political leaders of Bukarapun must give us the enabling environment to operate. We must be motivated and encouraged. We must be supported by our spiritual fathers through prayers. We must be supported by our youths. We must be supported by our women. We must be supported by our elders. We must be supported by our government, and finally, we must be supported by our wives and children, so husband. God bless you, God bless Ukarafu, and God bless you, KEDC. Elder uh, Dr. I.D. Udom. After all this, I now declare the first Ukarafu summit closed. Thank you very much. Good night.
concluding part of what we what you laid in our hearts to do we are grateful to you thank you because this marks the beginning of new things in Okanafo. your name alone shall be glorified in the mighty name of jesus christ and as we prepare again for the 46th anniversary celebration make it greater than this but let all our expectations be met in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen